You know, I, I think that uh, one of the things that people can do to learn how to uh, press through and, and get past sickness and disease in their body or, you know, circumstances that produce doubt, whether it's areas of your finances or physical body or whatever circumstance, wind and waves, whatever. One of the ways that you can practice is that when you don't feel the glory surging through your being, then you give yourself to entering in and pressing past all the stuff that would be running interference because reality of it is, the truth of it is, there is a river of glory, of divine power, rivers of inspiration continually available to us. Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's never left if he's come into your life and you want him to stay. So if you feel, I mean, I think that one of the areas of just being tired, for example, people get tired or they get weary. And, you know, Ann and I, we ran ourselves down so bad over the past year that I practice this, I have to practice this all the time because my body is just, my body is run down. You know, when you get run down, you just feel tired, you feel weak. You just don't have a lot to get up and go. Well, I found a way to get past all of that. I can break past all of that. I could either come under its influence. It's hard not to come. It's hard to resist the influence of sleep, right? Four o'clock in the morning, you're driving down the road. You haven't slept for a long time, right? That's a pretty powerful influence, isn't it? There's a way to break past it. And of course, you know, we all need to sleep and the Lord has put that as a regular cycle in our body and we need that, that rest is important. But how about when things are overwhelming you? How about when things, your body is pressing in upon you through just being tired or being weary and it's not sleeping time. Right now, you know it's not sleeping time, isn't it? Anybody wave, if you think you're supposed to go to sleep right now, just wave at me so I can, we can go in the back room and talk for a few minutes and then we'll come back out. And so you know that that isn't supposed to have dominance over, your body's not supposed to have dominance over what's going on, but it can. I mean, I've heard ministers describe that being really tired and weary will, has an effect on the anointing. Well, it has an effect on the anointing because people come under the influence of being tired. Your body can have, pain is a powerful, has a powerful voice, doesn't it? Huh? Got a powerful voice. There's a way to get past it. There's an authority around to get past it. Now you can just say, you can ignore this. It, can, it doesn't necessarily need to be good news to you. It could be bad news to you. It could be news of no value to you. You may not even believe it, but I'm telling you right now, as real as you can say to a mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and nothing is impossible for them that believe. As real as you can cast out devils, as real as you can raise the dead to life again, as real as the blind can be, oh, those who are blind can see and deaf can hear, as real as faith works, as real as the anointing works, the Spirit of God works, if you'll learn how to engage with the, the things of the Spirit, that no matter what you feel, no matter how, whether it's tired or weary or, um, you know, just discouraged or whatever, you lock in. And I'm going to put pain in that category, sickness in that category. I'll put your finances in that category. I'll put everything in that category. But especially just think of it like this, because I know it hits people probably on a daily basis. Many of you may give into it on a daily basis, and so it has even more dominance over you. Just imagine that you get home from work and you're tired, and you're worn out, and you, you start to go to the Word or you start to go to prayer, and you just, you, instead you just conk out, right? Right, just go ahead and adjust your halo and say, right, okay. And then, <laughs> you know, that's just kind of a cycle in your life and it, and it just, <laughs> it has power. It has power, you just yield to that, you do that. And, um, you know, it's like, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like me, I'm a bit out of shape right now and I'm try trying to get in shape. And it hurts. It's painful. It's painful. You got to get yourself up. You got to grab hold of yourself like this. 
I must really, you do, and you have to pull yourself in there and you say, you're going to do this and you're going to do it for this long and, you, and, and get it done. And you're going to go, you know, do push-ups and lift weights and set-ups and get yourself out there. And if you got to tie yourself to a rope and do a bumper of a car, you're running. Okay, if you fall, it's going to hurt. I mean, you do whatever you got to do because you know it's right and you know it's good. But to do it, it's going to be a struggle. To do it, it's going to cost you something. You know, sometimes, you know, I don't, I don't like to put it into the point category of struggle because it's too glorious. But sometimes you have to press in. And you better learn if you want to grow in faith and mature in faith and moving in God and have more consistency in your life, then you better learn how to press in. You better learn how to quit letting things like just in the category of tired. Tired's going to control your life. Hmm. Tired is going to control your life on the level that the Holy Ghost can't control? What? No way. You're not going to do that, right? Well, you do it. You do it. You do it. We do it. We do it. And so don't, once again, adjust your halo. It's a little bit crooked. But there is a way to press past it. And then what you do is you just say, okay, I'm committed. I will engage in this thing. I opened up my Bible. Over the years, I write little notes in the Bibles that I have. And the word presses things upon me. I was looking at a note I wrote just a little bit ago. I mean, a note. I was just looking a little bit ago at a note that I wrote some time ago. It said, many people who are sick will never be healed because they're waiting for it to happen instead of believing that it's already done. And that's just it. See, I believe that the presence of the Holy Ghost is here with me and in me. I don't need anybody convince me of that. If I did, I'd never be able to flow. I believe that. The Word of God has established that in my life. I know that. So, if there's not that flow of prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues, that glory realm, I'm going to lock in. I'll lock in. And I just became the most... And I'm And And that's no replacement for just also just telling the Lord how much you love him going ahead with your heart and with your spirit and with your mouth saying Lord I love you I thank you for your goodness I thank you for your mercy I thank you for your presence <laughs> thank you for every good thing it shouldn't take you too long you shouldn't have to spend too long of development to get in shape spiritually but if you all out of shape you've been laying around spiritually huh and you haven't been doing what you need to be doing spiritually. You're just all sluggish spiritually. You're all weak and, you know, flabby in your muscles. You know, you go pick up weights, right? Start off with you just, you know, those muscles aren't activated, right? You come back to it a little bit later, you can do it. You, you got more. Come back a little bit later, more. And it keeps building. It's, the same. it's a reflection of the spiritual has nothing to do with God. It has to do with you and me. Father has supplied everything we need. We sit around, maybe we sit around and act like God's supposed to come do something. He's already done. It's finished. And that's why Jesus said, oh, you, you know, you just got intense. You got this, uh, you perverse generation. I mean, he gets after it, right? Slow to believe. Wicked and perverse generation. How long do I have to put up with you? How long do I have to suffer you? You just want to just, you won't listen to what I tell you to do. And of course, he was basically talking to the 12 that he had already given authority to. There was nine of them there when he said this in Matthew chapter 17. And 70 of the elders, 70 others also that he had sent out were there. And they couldn't cast this devil out. The unman of unbelief, uh, the man, who, who, who was willing to admit that he had unbelief. The disciples wouldn't admit it. The man was admit, would admit, do you know that? That the, the disciples wouldn't. Why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus looks at him, looks at him and says, because of your unbelief. You know? And it's like, because of your unbelief done kind of thing. It really was. Now, you, you, don't, want to, you don't want to believe that because you want Jesus to be all whatever you imagine him to be. 
but he was pretty he he he, he was pretty adamant about the things of the father he lived in another realm he didn't live in the earthly realm he lived in the heavenly realm he didn't live in the doubt realm he lived in the faith realm he didn't live in the wondering if god is there realm he lived in the knowing that god is there realm. he didn't he wasn't he wasn't his eyes and sense, senses weren't filled with all the things that we've allowed our eyes and senses to be filled with his eyes and senses were filled with the presence of the father so he was you know talk about intolerant people talking about tolerance equals love tolerance doesn't equal love they're all wrong God is completely intolerant to sin in his love and his mercy he reaches out he commands men everywhere to repent okay but here we are here we are tonight and you, you have to say how tolerant is the Lord for how tolerant is the Lord of my unbelief <laughs> How tolerant is he for my unbelief? Just sitting around, you know. And then how about, how about if the Father has watched us expend all of our energy today on whatever it is for us? And then we come in and we just, no, 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 press that man. Get radical. And there's some of you, I've been telling you get radical for such a long time. After so long a time as this, hard not your heart. There's nothing left to say. After such a long a time, at such a time as this, such a long time as this, hard not your heart through unbelief. But go ahead and do what God says to do. Somebody's going to like, yeah, that's good. Well, then we're going to help you tonight. We're going to help you. Once again, we're going to tell you, in the mercies of God, we're going to talk to you about moving in faith and the shield of faith and what God demands of our lives. We're going to have to deal, we're going to have to help you understand this. The devil's not dead. And the opposing demon spirits have targeted you. And you don't have to be walked all over all the time, listen to everything that enters into your mind and, and respond to every little thing that comes across your body. There's something bigger going on here. But it doesn't really, for the most part, it doesn't become practical with a practical application until people have an encounter with the reality of a living God. It just is aloof. It's like, okay, as long as somebody walks in here and they bring the showers of blessings and they bring an earth shake and anointing where no devil or bodily physical thing is allowed to even stay, praise God, we're having to move in the spirit. Otherwise, we're on the frying pan or whatever. We're on the stove. Huh? We're in trouble. We're having, you know, we can't do it. So. Actually, Jesus said, faithless and perverse generation, didn't he? I reckon he can just say that to you. Well, I'll tell you right now, if he said that to me, I'd be ashamed, I'd repent real quickly. And then I'd immediately start acting different. I'm gonna have to, I wouldn't wanna have to sit in the same school every day. Okay, I told you yesterday, you forgot by it yesterday evening. So now we're back here this morning. Okay, we're, we're lesson, lesson one. Over and over again, for years, upon years, upon years. And people say, well, why can't I move on with God? Why isn't there more opportunities? Why is it I've been spending all my time and it doesn't seem like a gun anymore? Because you've got to start here. You've got to recognize that the enemy of your soul is going to do everything you possibly can do to stop you. And, the, and when you learn no compromises, when you don't give in, when you just stop giving in to all these little things that keep you from flowing in the anointing, if you stop giving in to the laziness spiritual and physical la laziness that prevents you from doing what you know is right to do. Physically, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, if I open up somebody's car door and I look on the floorboard of their car and I see trash on their floor, I will not get in that car. There was a time I was tolerant, I'd get in, I'd get in there. It, their lives totally messed up. I can tell by the floorboard of their car. So I said, how can you tell that somebody's spiritual life is totally messed up by the floorboard of the car? Because it's all, it's in integrated people. You want to make pretend and make believe. You can, see, you can pretend, we can pretend real easy on the hidden things and the unseen things. But if you don't have order in the seen things, you don't have order in the unseen things. If you tolerate trash and a mess 
in the, in the seen things, you tolerate trash and a mess in the unseen things. You listen to me. If you are undisciplined in the seen things, you are also undisciplined in the unseen things. You listen to me. And, and it's just a big part of it. It's just lazy. It's, a, it's tweaked. It's your tweak spiritually and mentally. You're tweaked. You've never recognized the responsibility that you have. And you'll, you'll allow shame in one area. You'll have shame in another area. You'll allow shame in the physical. You'll allow shame in the spiritual. Don't do it. Don't tolerate it. Get yourself squared away. Huh? Get yourself squared away. Just get yourself squared away. I mean, get disciplines in your life. I mean, I, today, I didn't feel like washing my car, but Wednesday I washed my car. Wednesday I washed my car. Whether I need or not, I washed my car. And, uh, and you could take it down, you could take it down to the, take it down to the car washing place. I need to get, I need to get out there and get it. Get, get, get order in your life. Because you don't have order in your life, naturally you don't have divine order. Who <laughs> tell me, I'm walking divine order. You don't even have human order, man. Tell you me walking in divine order. Give me a break. Let's get real with God. Let's be practical with things. Come on now. That's what I'm here to do. I'm here to get into your closet. Look around. Goodness gracious. I had one preacher one time who took me to look in his closet. <laughs> and everything was so neat and organized. And I didn't say him, but I didn't say anything. But I thought, but you didn't do this. You got a couple slaves doing it for you. <laughs> so it don't really count. You got hired help. Don't, just don't, don't tolerate anything in your life except for the best. Don't tolerate. Don't tolerate strife. There's, you can always walk out. Don't tolerate it. Don't tolerate wrong behavior. Don't tolerate sin. Don't tolerate hatred. Don't tolerate anger. Don't tolerate a mess. Don't tolerate it. Huh? Don't tolerate anything but the beauty and the splendor of His love, His joy, His peace, His goodness, His kindness, His mercy, His meekness, His temperance. Huh? His godliness, woo! His breath, just don't tolerate it. If it's not the flow of the Holy Ghost, don't tolerate it. Hallelujah. Purosa tata nebishi. I'm a langeli pakui. I tell you right now, I get as upset about dirt as I do demons. I'm dead. I tell you, I get as upset about trashy, filthy looking stuff as I do demons. I think it's related. I think it's related. I go to, if I go to India, I see trashy filth everywhere. I mean, Nepal. It's the same way in India. Also, Middle East, trashy filth, just a mess, just poverty stricken, mental breakdown, tweaked every, you know, coming and going. I went to some, in, in Cairo, I went, to some church, I went to this church, these ministers, and they were just living in filth. I'm like, this is filthy. You guys are filthy. So you, somebody said, you need to be tolerant of their culture. I'm not tolerant of their culture. You need to get cleaned up in this place. You need to, and then, I, then they take me, they get me to the church, and the church is the worst looking thing in the whole city. And it's right there where the sewer comes out. Man, I really got mad then. This is not right. I won't stand for this. God's house doesn't belong by the sewer outlet. You listen to me. I mean, I was angry. It was Holy Ghost, it was good Holy Ghost anger. Hallelujah. I didn't get invited back, but everybody understood I was there. <laughs> everybody remembered I was there. Believe me. Hallelujah. Bangara, ain't nobody ever forgot I was there. They didn't have to wonder what meant. I guarantee you they remember throughout the eternity the message I preached. It burnt like fire. And so I just want to encourage you. Don't, don't allow, don't like just accommodate things. Don't just allow whatever you feel. Don't just allow whatever state you're in. Don't allow sitting don't allow it. Don't allow sin. Don't allow tiredness. Don't allow laziness. Don't allow yourself to continue on being whatever it is that isn't excellent. 
majestic. The Father is majestic. I've been just studying Psalms 145 and I've just been studying the Hebrew language because it's just it's beautiful. Well, it's one of the most beautiful chapters in the Hebrew language because it's just all about praise, his splendor, his glory, his greatness, his beauty. And it's all these wonderful words in the Hebrew language. It's just beautiful, so beautiful, you know. And uh, Arikeka Elohe Ha Elohe. It, it just, it's just, it's just, it's, I don't, I'm going to get, get off on it, but it's just beautiful. But there's an application. I'm in him, he's in me. His splendor's here. His glory's here. I guarantee you, you won't find a one out of order thing in his house. It's beautiful. Everything's beautiful. Everything's set in its proper place. Everything has perfect order. Look at all of his creation. Huh? Hallelujah. You take man's pollution out of it, and every stream on the planet would be crystal clear. There'd be no dirt in it. Huh? Every waterway, everything would just be crystal Brilliant, bright, beautiful, pure. Come on. It ain't the bird's fault. It ain't the fish's fault. It ain't the raccoon's fault. Man's fault. Man. Man in his impurity. His impurity and spirit is going to be impure and he's just pumping out filth everywhere. And God help us to become more mindful of what we're, what we're participating with. Oh, well, the dilution factor. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, you get out your dilution factor. That's part of the problem. Thing. A little bit of sin's okay because it's gonna be diluted out with all the good. There's no dilute. It's look. There, there is no dilution factor. Not really. It's there. So I just encourage you, people. Don't tolerate things. Don't allow stuff that isn't right to be in your life. Don't allow yourself to come under the influences. Just be passive. Get active, be aggressive, be valiant, be strong, be purposeful. Don't, don't you lay down on nothing. You know, you, the anointing is supposed to be extreme through your life. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'll do. If, because I'm not going to, you know, I, I want to, I want to be respectful, respectful of the environment, as it were. His divine presence, is, that's the environment. And so if, if I find myself at any time where that glory isn't surging through me, well, I'll just pray quietly, huh? So everybody don't have to hear the engine trying to start up. You know what I'm saying? Are you listening to me? You understand what? Just pray this. And sometimes the best thing is to say, <laughs> don't come to church that way in the first place. But if you happen to do that, okay? You should never come to church that way. You should be ready. You should be filled up, overflowing. The power of God is surging through you. But, you know, just find yourself just saying, Holy Spirit, come fill me. Come overwhelm me. Come take full control of me. Father, I love you. I love your presence. Just begin to talk to my in that way. I thank you that you're here with me. Don't talk in doubt. Oh, God, please come back. <laughs> because I tell you, <laughs> That ain't a, that's not a prayer of faith. And Paul's not going to answer it. You're just going to dig yourself into a digger, bigger, deeper ditch. It's just recognizing what he's doing, how he's done it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Peace to put on it. You know, they put baby on today, Anna on, and she was a little sick. And I said, I command that old mangy stray dog to get out of there. She, she kind of came along and she said, Papa, funny, that stra says stray dog. That's funny. I said, yeah, well, you know, that's exactly how I deal with sickness and disease. It's just no mangy stray dog don't even belong around. 
And I commanded to go in Jesus' name. I mean, gets, we're not allowing it. We're not, not going to tolerate it. But if you don't believe you have any authority, ain't nothing going to happen. You're going to be saying, oh, Lord, please come down and do it. He's not going to do that. He gave us authority. He gave us authority. If we don't want to move in authority, huh? You know one of the biggest things that stop authority? You feeling bad about yourself. Oh, I'm a bad boy. I'm a bad girl. Oh, the Lord, doesn't he really love me? He doesn't really love me. I don't know. He maybe loves me. Where's that daisy? He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. I'm not sure what's going on. I don't know who really I am. I don't know. I'm, you know, who knows how God really feels about me? You know how God, how many of you know that? How many, how many of you know how you can know? How God feels about you. How many of you know? Good. You open up the Bible and you get to find out what God feels like. Hallelujah. And then you get finished feeling, hearing what, how Father feels about you. Whew. Be ready to do it now. Be ready to do it. It's the worst part of sin. It's the worst part of iniquity. It's the worst part of disobedience because it makes you feel distant from the Lord. He immediately erased the distance by the act of forgiveness, but it won't work for you. You got to go through penance. You do. And here's why. Here's why. Because it's, it opens a, a, a door, a greater door for Satan to condemn you. He has more access to you. Sin gives him access. And because I mean, you could shut them down if you could just step over into the faith and just know and believe the love of God and just accept it. You could just shut it down. And that's why when you just walk with God and you just do what's right in the sight and your heart doesn't condemn you, then, then have you confidence. Then you have confidence toward God. Because the enemy comes in like, you know, you just got the shield of faith that goes up. He goes, you know, you resist him. You submit to God, resist the devil, and he's gone. He can't, he can't come and mess with you. He can't mess with your thoughts. And of course, this is another thing about not being passive because you just if you just let any old thought come in your head that's why I won't don't allow imaginations against other people that's that's rule number one to keep from ha allowing Satan to sow seeds of thoughts and imaginations in your heart against yourself <laughs> I mean that is hectic ain't it now you before you were just basic basically you know blaming other people and imagining bad things about other people. Now you're blaming yourself and imagining bad things about yourself. Is that hectic? Who would ever do that? Who would, who would ever do that? Why? It's because we give access to things that should not have access because we're just passive. We're just passive. We're lazy. Or slothful. Slothful's a sin. Huh? Procrastinators unite tomorrow. You know, it, 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 listen, slothfulness is a sin. It is a sin. Laziness is a sin. Are we going to do it later? No, later. To be vigilant. My wife is the most vigilant person I know. If there's one dish unclean, it's clean. I'm like, can't, why can't we just like maybe get three or four together and then do them like collectively? Nope. Nope, everything's going to be perfect in its proper place. It's vigilance. How, how about being vigilant in the spirit? If you say, oh, I'll be vigilant in the spirit, well, then you're going to be vigilant in the natural. And it's going to change everything about your life because now your body and the things that you feel and the circumstances, and I'm really thinking, I'm really talking more about being tired, achy, sluggish, just discouraged not motivated get yourself up and motivate i mean you know what i'm saying you can get up and motivate you can either lay there and yawn or you can get up and motivate amen and of course we've all discovered that the more we do the more energy we have and the lazier we are and the more we lay around sit around the less energy we have this is the way it works it works that way spiritually too it's a testimony it's a declaration to you it, you listen to me. It, it will change your life. It changes. You say, look, I'm going to get things in order in my life. I'm not going to be passive. I'm going to be active. I'm not going to just let things happen. I'm going to be aggressive. I'm going to be vigilant. I'm going to be alert 
I'm going to be aware of my responsibilities and the things I need to do. And they're going to be organized and they're going to be in order and they're not going to be out of priority either. Huh? Come on now. I'm not going to go feed the starving children in another country when my own kids at home are starving. Does that make sense? Oh, I'm just mercy and love. You guys starve. I'm gonna, you know, it's just, it, there's too many things that go on in our life that's like that. I mean, you just have to, only the Holy Ghost can give you truth. Only the Holy Ghost can give you wisdom. Well, you know, we could sit around here, I thought tonight, well, you know, I could just come in and, you know, I could minister to you guys on uh, the gifts of the Spirit and flowing in the Holy Ghost and we can all have a good time and get happy and praise God, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, just be, be beside ourselves in the glory. Or I can give you some instructions so you can be that way all the time, basically. You can live in that. Huh? People want God to crawl over top their sin. He's not going to do it. They want God to cr crawl over top their doubt and unbelief. He's not going to do it. They want God to crawl over top of their laziness, their slothfulness, and do what it is that he's promised to. He's not going to do it. Not going to do it. Will not do it. Father demands cooperation. Amen. And he's brought us into a place to represent him. The Holy Spirit is here teaching us to represent him. And Father, what he's doing is he's got his blessing on us. And that's, that's, that's the picture of health. That's the picture of well-being. That's the picture of just beauty. I guarantee you, Abraham's tent didn't have holes in it. I guarantee you that was a tent to see. I guarantee you. I'm, I'm telling you, everything about the things of the Spirit is going to be excellent. And you're going to have to get in it. Huh? Come on. Clean the dirt from out underneath your fingernails and let's get going. You know what I'm saying? Look, you want to be, you want to have that. I'm talking about glory and splendor. I'm talking about giving yourself to excellency and the very best and it isn't just going to, huh? It ain't just going to be whatever. You know, you get what you see. There's an application. There is a diligence. There's a perseverance, right? There's a commitment. Praise the Lord. I had a commitment to get the dirt out from underneath my fingernails today. So I want to lay my hands on you. Praise the Lord tells me to put my finger on your lips. And charge you to do something. You got know, some old dirty finger coming up against you. <laughs> These things are true. Ah, but see, keep that on. Try that. See it on the other Try this. So tell me, Maharadi, Maharadi, get it. You know, on Sunday I was so blessed because we had seven people here all from basically the same pro uh, province in India. And I said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And the one, the one Hindi girl said, no, Pastor, we don't have that kind of fire yet, but we want that fire. Because she knew exactly what I was talking about. Because the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the evidence of speaking in tongues. It's the glory that comes. Hallelujah. It's that fire. Is that a nice day? And it was just so beautiful. Watch the power of God come on all seven of those. Folks, Kerala, right? Kerala, Kerala, huh? Kerala, Kerala, Kerala. I like Kerala, but okay, Kerala. <laughs> Kerala sounds stronger. K-E-R-A-L-A. -E okay, Kerala. Well, if we're gonna pray right for it, we better pronounce it right, eh? How can we say we're gonna really gonna be burdened for it and pray for it and see the power of God come? We can't even pronounce it right, right? So, Amen. Hallelujah.
If you don't have that kind of fire tonight, it's available for you too. Hallelujah. Kind of say it. Hallelujah. 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 Marama Satahe. Sikana Heshe Ate. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's one of the most powerful things I know how to say in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Lamboda <laughs> Sita. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father, for help from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, from the tips of my fingers to the tips of my toes, spirit, soul, and body, every part of my being, every cell of my being vibrating with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I thank you for the fire on, my, on the inside of me, in my passion, just this inspiration that can't be contained and excitement, oh, God, that overwhelms every part of my being and it in, in worship and praise unto your holy name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you learn how to move, push past tiredness and all the other stuff and doubt and unbelief and discouragement spiritually, it will train you to be able to then break the yoke of sickness or disease that would come on you. Same way, I deal with it exactly the same way. If any kind of sickness or disease comes on me, I deal with it the same exact way. I just pray in the Holy Ghost till I touch heaven and it broke, broken. It falls off of me like, uh, you know, burnt cords. But I'm not passive. I'm not passive. I'll be active. I'm going to get on my walk around. I'm going to kick that thing till it's out of here. Hallelujah. Pull so wrong. Every hindrance has got to go down. The Lord teaches in our hands to worship that, that a bow of steel is broken with our arm. He's given us the ability to run through a troop. Hallelujah. To leap over wall. I've got the ability to do all things. To sit around sit around on our duff I can do all things through Christ Jesus and we don't even own a car you know what I'm saying give me a break you know or a bike whatever you however age whatever age you are and to do the things that you need to do is what I'm saying father gave you faith to do the things that you need to do you'll be able to you'll, I can do all things that Christ that treats me you'll have everything that you need to get the job done I can do all things that Christ, Christ who strengthens me. You'll be able to rule your, your body and bring it into submission. Amen. You'll be able to rule your spirit. What does the scripture say about a person who can rule the spirit? He's mightier or stronger than he that takes a city. And it takes strategy to take a city. A walled city. Literally, a walled city. You've got to be mighty. You've got to have, you've got to have power. You've got to have influence. You've got to lead you got enough influence and leadership ability to lead men into war you got to have enough strategy and insight and be able to set that thing up right you rule your spirit come on man hallelujah maybe just you know sulk or throw temper tantrums what's that you have no rule over your spirit and the lord said then you got to sit around and shout and say i can do all things to christ and strengthens me yes you can so now it's now time to be strengthened Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to be strengthened. Ha ha. You get strengthened passively. You get strengthened actively by participating. Hallelujah. Ha 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 ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for the ability. And the, and the you know, it was a beautiful thing as you look at in the Greek language. You can see the didyme is ability in the Greek language. And from that root comes the divine power, dunamis. Huh? And through that ability, and it's not human ability, but it's a willingness to participate, to be co and see co-laborers with them, to do it with them, to say, oh, you know, the Holy Ghost doesn't, the Holy, we're not zombies. And the Holy Ghost is in us. We're Christian zombies. And everything we do, you know, we know it's a proactive participation of our will with the Holy Spirit. We yield to Him. He gives us the ability. He takes control by permission. It's just as almost all the time, we, the Lord's just looking for us to give us, for us to give Him permission to bless us. Ha, si para nadia. Ha, no se te Would you just give the Lord permission to bless you? Would you just say, Lord, I give you permission to bless you. 
<laughs> by, by no longer doing it my way, but agreeing with you. Is anybody still sick in here? Anybody still tired? In here? Sick and tired, both in the same category. They, they're both in the same category. In pain, hurting, disappointed, discouragement. Did you know that discouragement is your enemy? Yes. Did you know discouragement is your enemy? Do you deal with it like an enemy? Do you deal with discouragement with, as the enemy that it is, or are you just pass it to it? It's just like somebody running around in your house with a machete. Ah, uh, yeah, well, what's that in your living room? Oh, this guy with a machete looking for somebody to kill. <laughs> well, why don't you call 911 or do something about it? Discouragement is an enemy. It's a destructive enemy. Accusation. Adversary. That's another name for Satan. Did you know that? I mean, just don't allow ad, that. Don't allow that adversarial thing to go on in your thinking. It's satanic by 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 word. Don't allow it. Because then you're gonna get a. The enemy will use that to get you all discouraged and all upset and feel so bummed out. You get to the place where, you know, you just don't have any courage or any confidence and you're going to go do something crazy. Because darkness abhors that emptiness. God wants you to be filled. I'm full. I'm so full, I'm running over. I'm running over so intensely, I got rivers. And that's a couple of different ways to run over. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My cup runs over. Hallelujah. The cup of my life runs over. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. Because I, I know He's with me always. He's here with me. He's with me and in me. Do you know that that's what you do when you begin to feel discouraged? When you feel these threatening things, these condemning things? When you feel these adversarial things, you just begin to think that he's with you and in you. You begin to just praise him for all that he's faithfully said and done. I mean, if the disciples would have done that, Jesus wouldn't have said, faithless and perverse generation, bring him here. I mean, who knows what they told the guy? Basically, they told him something like this. Sorry, we can't cast out the devil. Basically, because that's what he told Jesus. He said, I brought him to your disciples and they couldn't cast him out. Right? I gave you guys the authority. Why didn't you do it? You know, it's the kind of same category of them. Oh, no. We didn't bring bread. He's upset because we didn't bring bread because he said, Beware the leaven of the Pharisees. And the Sadducees. Oh, no. He's upset. Jesus is upset because we didn't bring bread. And he's, Why can't you get it? Why don't you get it? That's really what he said. I was thinking about translating that verse of scripture that way instead of the more, you know, pious, why don't you understand? <laughs> why don't you get it? Why don't you get it? Don't you remember? The five loaves and the 5,000. Seven loaves and the seven basket filled pulls of fragments of broken pieces that you took up afterwards among the 4,000. The Lord is saying, there's another round, folks. There's another round. And he's telling us over and again, if you want this realm to be strong and active in your life, you've got to quit running in the sense realm. you got to be quit. You have to stop being so integrated in the natural realm where these things have no relevance. They won't work because the natural realm is opposed to this realm. They can't agree. I'm just, and I'm not just talking, I'm not talking about an iniquity realm. I'm talking about a natural realm says you silly, you can't walk on the water. You feel bad, so just live with it, etc. Okay? Uh, you can't command the wind waves. You can, Zoe. Praise God for the anointing happening in this beautiful way. Wonderful thing was happening with Zoe. Listen, she's going to lay hands on people when she does lightning to God just start. I first heard that in my spirit when she was like yay big and I was dedicating her to the Lord. I mean, she was like something like, I don't know, maybe 22 inches long or something. 
10 pounds or something. You're going to do that. That's what God's, that's, that's what, that's what's going to happen. They're, they're, I, you and I are in preparation for a coming day. And while we being prepared, while the prepar preparation process is where the power of God is being activated in our life in greater manifestation with greater skills and sometimes it comes powerfully you know and it's just like whoa you know just amazing miracles and other times it's like there is a there's almost a hindrance and you almost feel like well what's happened you know <laughs> you know well, where's the ammo so at the end in the, it, but the the process in the process and, and and the and the interaction is that we still walk in the same confidence of our fellowship and relationship with the Lord that nothing's changed. Whether the whole place gets mowed down under the power of God or everybody sits there and looks at you like a cow staring at a new gate and it's a terrible looking sight. Believe me, we say that because it's a terrible looking sight. The cow's like, he drops its head and it won't move. And it's got the weirdest looking ever. You know, that's why we say that because it's, you know, if you've been in rural, if you lived a rural life, it's like, it's a difficult situation. But nonetheless, What happens when you and I find a place in God, in Christ Jesus, where it doesn't matter who you are and who he is and what he said and what you're going to do is unaltered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what Jesus really said concerning what the, the, what the disciples should have done? They should have stayed with it and told the Pharisees and Sadducees, shut up and get out of here and stayed crying out to God till they broke through. And that's why he said, this crying comes out by, only by prayer and fasting. And that means sometimes you, sometimes where you're at in the process, because he looked at him and says, you had no faith. He said, he said, the word no faith and it translated unbelief. But yet in many areas they had faith and they had belief, but in that one area they didn't because of the circumstance and situation. What was going on? They were growing, they were maturing, they're coming into, you know, this new dimension of God. And through the act through the action activity of participation, it's how they got there. They would have never got to the, the day of Pentecost without participating. And every day that they participated with God secured their position at the day of Pentecost. Otherwise, otherwise They'd have been like the other 380. No shows. Because Jesus told about 500 brethren, go tarry in Jerusalem. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And 120 made it there. And it happens all the time. People getting sorted out. Well, I believe this and I believe that. And I think this and I think that. Forget about what you think and what you believe. You better line up with what God says. You better get hungry for the word of God. You better not put God's word on the shelf and make it something way down the list of priority when you're going to get around to it. Because a lot of people develop what they believe before they ever really even begin to read the Bible. They've already developed what they believe. And is that weird or what? They've already sorted out what they believe. And it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. A little bit of Old Covenant, a little bit of New Covenant, a little bit of Baptist, a little bit of Pentecost, a little bit of Methodist, a little bit of Presbyterian, a little bit of Baha'i. A little bit of Hinduism, a little bit of Buddhism, and throw them all together. Uh-oh. And then you're going to have a problem when the Holy Ghost starts speaking. You know what's going to happen when the Holy Ghost starts speaking? Your Buddhism and Hinduism is going to come to the surface. That's all that's going to come to the surface. Because God's going to deal with the thing. God's going to deal with the impurity. And you're going to get offended. Are you listening to me? You're going to get upset. Be active. Be aggressive. Be violent. Be, ex be excessively passionate. Be real, real hungry, like somebody you hadn't eaten for a long time and got all this food in front of you. Be thirsty, like the prophet Isaiah said, so thirsty that your tongue's swollen in your mouth.
and your life is failing you for thirst. And then with that kind of passion and that kind of intensity, ask me, says the Lord. In that state, ask me. And I'll do it. Ha, 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 ha. Somebody said, wow, my goodness, that's a lot of torture. That sounds like torture. No, it's a spiritual disposition that you participate with on a daily basis or you harden your heart against on a daily basis. You either resist or you yield. There's no in-between. Well, I'm neither y resisting or yielding. What are you? Nonsense. You either yielding or you resisting. The Lord tells us, do not put out the fire of the Holy Ghost. It's a powerful verse of Scripture, isn't it? Quench not the Spirit. Put not out, do not put out the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm praying in Jesus' name tonight. Everybody in this place allows the Holy Spirit and that which He brings to us to be so kindled within on the inside of us that we leave out of here tonight recognizing the things that will put out that fire and the things that will inflame that fire. Because I'm telling you, when you grieve the Holy Ghost, when you put out that fire, when you quench the Holy Spirit, it leaves you in a place kind of dull and dead. And sometimes it's really because you've not, you basically, some people are being oppressed by discouraging thoughts, slanderous thoughts, vain imaginations the enemy is able to get in your mind and spin things around and you'll accuse people you'll have attitudes towards other people especially God's people and he says then it's attitudes towards me are you listening to me when I first discovered that wrong attitudes towards other people father took it personally it was against him and him alone I said I shut that thing down right now Amen. I just forgive everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> just bless everybody. Just total my because it really gives a to, total puts a whole new picture on the thing, and then you're able to really then go to your knees and start praying for their blessing. You know, Jesus, touch them, use them. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Ramon to say it. And so, some people, you got a lot of work to do. I'm just tell you right now, just face up to it. You got a lot of work to do. You've been allowing things to run through your head and it should have been shut down long ago. And the longer you let them go through your head, the stronger and more fortified they become. So you got yourself a job of work to do. Uh, that's why if you don't let yourself get too bad out of shape, it's not hard to get back in shape. But if you go if you go too long, you get too flabby, it's just like oh, the mountain is so high, how do you get over it? How do you even get started? I'm not kidding you. I, listen, there was this guy. <laughs> there was this guy. He must have weighed 400 pounds. And he was on this bike. It was a pretty big bike. But he was so huge. <laughs> the bike looked a little teeny tiny. Okay. For two years, I watched him pedal up the grade of 67 to Ramona. Every day I came by at the same time. And there he was, just faithfully, just pedaling home from work. I watched this guy shrink. His bike got big, he got smaller. It was, it's amazing. It's amazing, the commitment. Some of you have that same thing in the spirit. You have the same thing. You've allowed things to go on way too long. And thus, you find yourself out of shape, weak, overwhelmed, and just basically taken out by this thing. You don't know how to stop it. You don't know how to deal with it. We can lay hands on you. <laughs> we, you can get baptized in the Holy Ghost every meeting you come to. But the same, you're still going to have Monday morning. And you're still going to have Thursday morning. And that's where you're going to have to say, okay, I'm going to stand up. I'm going to get my ground here. Watch me now. I'm going to play king of the mountain this thing. Come on. And as soon as it comes, sudden thought comes, I throw it down. It comes another one, I throw it down. I learned to recognize because there's folks, people, there's, pe there's many, many people that have never even really identified imaginations, have never really identified condemnation, accusation, discouraging thoughts, 
that way in which their mind processes things. Slander, accusations that you receive against yourself becomes then ultimately accusations and slander that then you turn against other people. You're passive. You're, it's almost like you have no control. It, 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 in some respects, it almost even becomes more than demonic oppression. It becomes a habit, it becomes a lifestyle, it becomes a way of processing, a way of thinking, a way of acting, a way of being. And it just completely messed up. It's so tweaked. And the words come to, to, to take the tweak out and straighten us out and fix us. And he did when we were born again. It's just that you didn't listen to the Holy Ghost. You didn't listen to the Word of God. You didn't listen to the message. You didn't apply what God said. You had an excuse. You had a reason. I, I, listen, I've been around people who hear things wrong all the time. I preached a sermon one night and a guy left convinced that he needed to go invest in Budweiser. Get more stocks. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine getting that from me? Oh, yeah. He went and he was certain that in the meeting he was supposed to buy more stocks and Budweiser. He was tweaked. He was messed up. He didn't last long. He didn't last long. <laughs> People, listen, hearing things, just always hearing things. I never said anything about, I never would say anything about anything like that. But what's happening? You're listening to voices. Voices in your head can become louder than the audible voice that's actually speaking. And it could become integrated. The guy, the guy was, he wasn't, as far as I know, born again. Clearly, he needed deliverance. Somebody, I think Joseph brought him to church, as a matter of fact, but nonetheless, I wasn't here nor there. It was many years ago, but I'm just saying, it's an example of where you just, come on. You, gotta, you have to understand, this is why Father wants us to live by His Word. This is why He wants us to understand how to let His peace rule our heart and mind. You know what this peace is? It's the absence of any condemnation. Huh? I, you, you know, con condemnation comes come to me, I said, wait a minute, there is therefore now no condemnation I'm in Christ Jesus. I'm in Christ Jesus. Condemnation, that, that ain't the Holy Ghost. And that ain't my thinking. You foul spirit of hell, I'm going to knock you out right now. I smash you. Get over here so I can put my heel on my boot right where it belongs. Huh? Come on. It's active, aggressive, violent. Kingdom of heaven suffers violence, violence. Extremely aggressive, the aggro, the passionate, those who will not be without it, lay hold on it, cease it, seize it. They seize it. Hallelujah. Come on, seize the things of God. Don't be, don't be compromised. Don't have it mixed up. Don't have a mixture. Don't be part this and part that. Belong, some belong in this and some belong in that. Uh, some in the kingdom and some in the earth be all sold out to Jesus. Let him rule your life. Uh-huh. You need, dear people, the thing we got to grab hold of is the reality that we need to follow Jesus, that we need to follow the Holy Ghost. Some people follow their parent. There's a, I, I hope that every parent in here is worthy to be followed that you act and do the things like Christ Jesus does them. But I'm gonna tell you right now, every parent better make sure that they're telling their children, follow me as I follow Jesus. Everything that is in my life that is in divine order, then, then do it. Otherwise, don't do what I do. Pray for me to start doing what he does. Hey, you need to ask your kids. Hey, can you, come on, tell, be honest with me. Do you see any areas of my life that's out of order? And so, just do these things. Just don't be, don't be passive. Don't. Just you take control of your life and submit it to God so he can have full control. See, the Lord says that we know that everyone that is born of him keeps themselves. 1 John 5, 18. We keep ourselves. He's given us the authority. He's given us the ability to choose him. And in uh, keeping myself and choosing Him, I surrender myself completely over to Him, being kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. <laughs> because 
He has worked within me. I still have a will. I still have a choice. I will and I choose. And because I will and I choose, then he wills and does of his good pleasure within me. Take God, take a man's will out of it, you got false doctrine. You take man's will out of it, and you're not going to ever stand in a place of ever overcoming the powers of darkness and sin. And thus, you will never know the life of the believer. Because the life of the believer is equal to the life of the overcomer. And people say, well, signs and wonders and miracles prove. Signs and wonders and miracles are proof that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead to the lost. The proof that you are a believer is that you overcome sin. The tr proof of the believer is that they overcome sin. That's what Jesus says. That's what the Word of God declares to us. We've overcome the wicked one because greater is he that is in us. Build up and believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. Every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. But you're of God, little children. And, you, and, and we know that, every one, that, that we, over, we overcome the world because greater is he in us than he that is in the world. We know that everyone who is born of God does not sin, keeps himself, and the wicked one cannot access him. Wow. Dearly, uh, brother, young men, I write unto you because the word of God lives in a, because the word of God dwells in you, and you have overcome the wicked one. Huh? Then Jesus said, He that overcomes as I've overcome will sit down with me in my throne, even as I sit down with my Father in his throne. And so he, Jesus, writes to the overcomer. Amen? And this is, the, this is the overcoming power that overcomes the world. And what's that? Huh? This is the overcoming power that overcomes the world. And what's that? And our faith is that Christ is in me. Hallelujah. Our faith is that we've been born of the Spirit. And then, hallelujah. That's what our faith is. And the he that is joined unto the Lord is one Spirit. That's our faith. That, that the Holy Ghost is in us and that Christ Jesus is in us. Praise the name of the living God. Wow, that's a whole lot of overcoming power, isn't it? Well, we just got to sing more of us every day because God's camping with us. That didn't make any sense, does it? Well, God's camping with us. God's in us and dwells in us, and so we just got to sing more of us every day. How can that be possible? Who could believe that? Somebody called me up and they said, um, they said, um, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, I've been born again, but I'm a homosexual. And, and I'm not a practicing homosexual, so do you feel that I'm right with God? I said, no, you need to be delivered. You've not been born again yet. But I could actually superimpose on that a whole lot of different ideas and things that people have in their head that is just as evil. Well, I'm not practicing. They kept saying, well, I'm not practicing it. I'm denying it. I said, when God creates you anew, He creates you to be just like Him. The new creation is like Him. Not like Satan. Like Him. Not like unredeemed man. Like Him. In righteousness and true holiness. And there's a lot of people, they got born again, and then somebody tell them that, no, you're going to still act this way, or you're going to act that way, or you're going to be this way, or you're going to be that way. And so they went ahead and began to take upon the image, the wrong image. They began to bear the wrong image. And so they went out of the faith into a place that's not the faith. You're never going to live the miracle life of God but by the faith. And if you don't believe in the faith or that we walk in His righteousness and holiness, that we're shaped in His righteousness and holiness, that we're recreated in after His image, after His righteousness and holiness, you're never going to do it. It ain't going to happen. You know, and Paul said that, that the Galatian church had fallen from the faith just simply because they were adding circumcision. They were adding some of the law. It's like people say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to get in trouble with this one. Uh-oh. I'm going to have to say it, though. You know, Messianic Jew. There's no such thing. This is the new covenant. 
there is neither Jew nor Gentile. What happens is we, we want to go back to certain identities and we want to bring them along with us. He cannot. He removed the center wall of partition. He destroyed it. Ne there is neither Jew nor Gentile. Somebody said replacement theology. It's not. It is not even close. That is, a, that is, a, that is an idea and a concept that has no relevance nor meaning. God brought the descendants of Abraham and engrafted them, incorporated them into the kingdom of God. Then, until the day that he would bring salvation for all men, making the Levite equivalent to the Scythian. Saying everybody gets to come in. And now there is neither. Doesn't exist. Listen to Paul. He hits it over and over and over again. And then the Galatians said, well, you know, we got to still have some kind of an identity. He says, no, there's no identity except for Christ. Circumcision matters nothing. Uncircumcision matters nothing. If you've got to have an identity outside of Christ, you've fallen from grace. Because you've, grow, you've gone outside of the faith. The faith is the new creation. A new creation that only exists in Christ Jesus. And you need it whether you're a Jew or a Gentile. Whether you're a Levite or a Scythian. I mean, it's the Scythians are the worst of the most evil. They're the most ungodly. These are tough things for people to accept. And then people get and come into the kingdom of God. And they want to say, well, I'm still a sinner. Save a no, you're not. You're a saint. You were a sinner, now made a saint. You, you were the child of the devil, now you're the child of God. You're not like somewhere in between. I got two dads. The struggle of two natures. From, from, from thence comes forth. All kinds of messed up thinking. Probably where bipolar disease comes from. schizophrenia multiple personalities rises out of such spiritual depravity we belong to him he bought us he purchased us and when we've turned our life over to him in sincerity and truth I'm telling you right now he's ours and all we got to do is no matter where we're at today no matter where we find ourselves all we got to do is read the Word of God and obey the Word of God and say it's true so many people will never be healed, and just this is the point I was making earlier, will never be healed because they are unwilling to accept that it's already done. And it goes the same way spiritually as it does physically, and the same way emotionally. Somebody says, well, I got I this terrible thing happened to me. Well, you need to quit thinking about it. You need to commit it to God. Go write down on a piece of paper and go burn it. Make a big bonfire so it burns for a long time. And there's nothing left it left. You know what I'm saying? Put it in the oven. Something till it's just burned and there's just nothing there. Quit thinking about it. It's the imagination. It's the thought life. It's the listening to suggestions that hold God's people back suggestions that come out of a realm of men and out of a realm of devils because it's the same thing Jesus said get out of my sight Satan actually said get out of my sight you adversary but it's the same word Satanos in Greek you can either translate that get out of my sight get or get behind me Satan or get behind me adversary Peter he started to dress Peter you thinking like men and not like God uh-oh, if everybody in this place would walk out of here with that, app, that verse of Scripture applied to your life and say, I'm going to quit thinking like men and I'm going to start thinking like Father and He's given me the privilege to do it because He's given me His Word. I can now allow His Word to lead me, guide me, direct me, direct me, be engrafted in me, abide and dwell in me, rule over me, be led by, yet eat it, it's bread of life. A big chunk, if not all, of your problems would cease to exist. And you could say you went to a deliverance meeting tonight and it really works.
too many deliverance meetings, too many Holy Ghost fire meetings, too many being filled meetings lead people the same way they were spiritually, just a little bit emotionally different for a while. People, come on now. I've been around here a long time. I've watched the stuff come and go. I've seen a whole bunch of different things happen in my lifetime. I, I like the part where people come and get before God and make a culture out of seeking the Lord and there's a fire of His presence that they touch that brings within them an awesome awareness of His presence and a fear over the things that He has said. An indignation, a certainty, a resolve to do it His way. I'm going to tell you right now, God deals with the disposition of the wicked again and again. He deals with the disposition of those who practice and work iniquity again and again. He deals with those who participate with sin and have deeds that are wrong or evil. There are literally thousands of scriptures devoted to it. It is the theme of redemption to deliver men from his evil and from his sin. It is the theme. God's wrath is certain, dear people. The wicked shall be cut off. They shall perish. Jesus got so radical about it, he says, if your hand or your foot causes you to stumble, that's the way he says it in Matthew 18, cut it off. Because it's better to go in, maim or halt into life having only one foot or one hand rather than to be cast into eternal fire. And that's what he says, eternal fire, having two hands and two feet. If your eye causes you to stumble, pluck it out and literally cast it away from you is some terrible thing, like a leech on you. I mean, that's the, that's the life of the language. You pluck it out and cast, get it out. Ah. For it's better that you enter in, and this is what the Greek language literally says, one-eyed. It is better for you to enter into life one-eyed. Can't you just see the one-eyed people, the congregation of the one-eyed coming into heaven? <laughs> I wonder, you know. It's better to enter into life one-eyed than to be cast into the fires of Gehenna having two eyes. And you know what the fires of Gehenna were about? That's where they offered their sons to Moloch. That was the fires of Gehenna. They offered their, they offered their children to, de to demon spirits in the fire. Can you imagine God's people becoming so depraved in their doctrine that the priest would get up and teach the things of worshiping God. Now, guys, those of you, you know who you are, you got to go off your kid to Mola. Pretty crazy stuff goes down around people, huh? In the kingdom of God. Okay, so that's my announcements tonight. And just believing God, you're going to get active instead of passive. You're not going to sit around and get beat up anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. You're going to do some beating up. You're going to turn this thing around. Amen. Uh, you can get your, you don't forget about the stick. Get your sword in your hand. Amen. No butter knife, a sword. Amen. Hallelujah. And just remember, a sword's not for buttering bread. It's for taking head. It's, it's you come out with a, you know, it's, this is part of what the Lord wants us to have in our hand. Huh? The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hallelujah. 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 For I'll praise the name of the Lord. Let's just let's let's just stand and let's stand out. Just kind of manje a stand on there. So kind of mine, shatana me a tea. Hala mane and paya. Hala mane a paya. Hala se on a mandera. Wow, hour and a half. See, so you got a mandaya haya. <laughs> just worship him. Kira manjala la manbea la seya la mangea la manjea la manjea la manjea la manjea la manjea 
Say Adam and my Lord and my name and break. Amanje Ramanje Alamanje Ranandia. Get him a nana nana bear. Hallelujah. Say Ramanje Hallelujah. Also, to he said, He had a son of all Sadia la Cotorabonjea Badayo. He la 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 Thank you, Father, for your showers of love, your showers of blessing, your rain, oh God, your early rain and your latter rain. Thank you for the great outpourings. Thank you, Father God, for the flowing forth of your glorious presence, oh God. No pain can reign in His presence. No sickness, no sin dwell in this place of interaction with Him. <laughs> oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Worship the Lord in the beauty of praise. Worship the Lord with thanksgiving. Worship the Lord in the ancient days. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, we magnify your name. Oh, be magnified, oh God, in your glory. Oh God, be magnified, oh Lord, in your splendor. Oh Lord, be magnified in the beauty of holiness. Oh God, be magnified in your righteousness. Oh God, be magnified in your virtue. Oh God, be magnified in your glory. Hallelujah. Oh Rama, Mama, Mama, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. Your praise will continually be in my mouth. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Your praise, Lord. Your praise, Lord. <laughs> Woohoo!
By the spirit of truth by the spirit of truth we worship you we worship you father we worship you oh god our god we worship you we worship you in the beauty of your holiness, we worship you. We worship you. By the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. By the Holy Spirit, God, we worship you. We worship you. Cosa ti rebe prima sotto chi andasate? The rain of your presence that brings the blessings of revival. The glory of your presence is all that we desire. Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. We worship. 
worship you. We worship you. Ha. <laughs> we worship you. We worship you. Lord Jesus. Let your glory fill this place. Every dimension of my life. Let your glory overwhelm everyone as we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. Lord Jesus, amazing grace the Father gave when He gave to me Jesus. Amazing grace the Father gave when He gave to us his son Jesus Lord Jesus Jesus we worship you we worship you we worship you, Lord Jesus. We worship. We worship you. We worship you, Lord Jesus. You're deserving of everything. And all I have to give is me. But all my affections and devotions, Lord, they're yours. You deserve all the praise and glory and honor. But all that I can give. You still to you, Holy Ghost, you do the rest as I worship Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. Lord Jesus, you deserve of everything. But all I have to give is me, and I give you everything, all my affections and desires, to stand with you among the mighty, in the presence of the Father, I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, Lord Jesus. Take control of everything, O oh God, be glorified in me. Take control of everything, O oh Lord, I yield myself to Thee, to worship You, I worship You, I worship You, Lord Jesus. I worship you, all that I have, you're the only meaning of life to me, 
Lord, you're the definition. You the word, you the proclamation. You the description of everything. I worship you, Lord. We worship you. Lord, you're deserving of everything, but all I have to give is me. And without restraint, oh God, I give my all to thee. Lord, you deserving of everything. But all I have to give is me. And without restraint, O oh Lord, I give my all to Thee. To worship You. To worship You. To adore Your holy name. To worship you. Lord, we worship you. We're hungering and thirsting for you, Lord. Jesus Radande, Jibiru Zizidi, Hallelujah, Halala Sateranea, Ha Ha, Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the fire. Hallelujah. 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 I, I just want to spend just a few minutes talking to you about the life that is in Christ Jesus. And I want to talk to you about the life in Christ Jesus so that you'll stay in the life and it'll be contrast against all other things. The life in the Christ, and the life that is in Christ Jesus is a life full of faith. A life that is in Christ Jesus is the life that is in complete oneness with the Father. It's absolutely right. It's guilt-free. Has no sin. <laughs> it's full of righteousness and holiness and purity. Purity. What a wonderful thing. It's full of virtue. Full of love, full of peace, full of joy, full of temperance, long suffering, meekness. Things that people don't really comprehend the beauty and the excellence of it humility. God, the Holy Spirit, is the one who brought forth everything within the world manifested everything that the word spoke and the beauty and the splendor of having his glory and the expression of his life through our life is simply based on whether or not we are willing to say no to everything that is contrary to the life of Jesus it doesn't get any more difficult than that and if we and if we're willing to do this I want you to just be seated for just a minute if we're willing to do this We're willing to if we're willing to engage in this life 
There is an expression of joy unspeakable that will keep us from every sadness and sorrow that exists. So if we're willing to just engage in this life and refuse any other thing, if we, there are, we making cho we, we're choosing things all the time. There's always choices going on. And, and, and many times, because this world is under the control in, of the prince of the power of the air, of course, we're supposed to live in an entirely separate realm. You know that? We're not supposed to live in the world system. We're not supposed to live under the prince of the power of the air, the God of this world, the spirit that works in the spirit of disobedient, children of disobedient. We're supposed to live over in a realm called heaven. There's a realm, of, there's two distinct realms right now. Did you know this? And we were called out of darkness into his marvelous light. We were trans we were delivered out of the darkness. Praise God, he came and delivered us. He's the deliverer, that's salvation. When we say, when we say deliverer, or Savior, we're saying the same thing. So when Paul said in 1 Corinthians, or for, forgive me, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13, he said, having delivered us from the power of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, the power of darkness, he translated us into the kingdom of the dear son. He came as the Savior and got us. We were in prison to the, under the elements and the power of the satanic realm. Jesus stepped in by, on the basis of us calling out to him he stepped in and he grabbed a hold of our lives, our being. And he brought us out of that into a realm of oneness with him, into, a, un, un, into the place where he reigns over us. And that's why Paul expressed his salvation or deliverance. He said, you being delivered or being saved by the washing of the water of regeneration. I mean, that can, you can, it's literally saying, literally by the cleansing that comes through an entirely new genetics. I mean, I, Bob is really talking about a pretty radical, complete change, eh? By the washing of the water of regeneration. Sometimes we can just go, go flying through that phrase and not even know what we're saying. By the washing of the water of the new birth. By the washing of the water of having been born again. By the washing of the water of being made a new creation. By the washing of the water of being made a new creature. creature. <laughs> By the washing of the water that resulted in you being in Christ. And old things having passed away, behold, everything is new. By the washing of the water. Hallelujah. It gave to you a divine nature. The washing of the water that gave you the same life that Jesus has. The same life that the Father has. The same life that the Holy Spirit has. We choosing all the time. I mean, it is a terrible thing that God, we have a covenant with God where we can live in this realm and yet we continually walk out of the realm. And our covenant is Christ Jesus. Our covenant is a circumcised heart. It's not a circumcision of the flesh. It's a circumcised heart. And the circumcised heart is the removal of the body of the sin nature. That's what Paul said. That's radical, isn't it? And yet... In this covenant, just like Israel, many times we're just giving ourselves over to things that are unholy, things that we don't need to be under the, under the, the rule of and under the, the oppression of. A large part of that is we don't understand the spiritual dimension of the lives that we're living and we think that the thoughts that are running through our head are just some natural conclusions to the events that we're dealing with. And they're not. It's entirely spiritual. And Father has given us a privilege to live in a heavenly realm that is only accessible by faith and by the Spirit. We have access by faith. We have access by the Spirit. There's two realms of access, and both equal, really, in many respects. Because it's the Holy Ghost that gives faith, and it's faith that allows us to hook up with the Holy Ghost. So that's the only reason I make it, I said that it's equal. I should say, rather say more appropriately say they're, re, they're absolutely related, inseparable, inseparably related, put it that way. Because obviously God, the Holy Ghost, is God, and, and faith is something that He produces. And we just want to be, just want to be as accurate as we possibly can when we're making known this wonderful thing that God has given to us called salvation, deliverance, the washing of water, of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost comes as a free gift. But it is a free gift that results in an entirely changed life. 
People think that a free gift, well, all you got to do to be saved is to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That's true. It results in a new creation now to live a new kind of a life. And the new kind of a life is going to have all these new de different kinds of deeds with it, different kinds of actions and behavior. And that's why the Lord says he's going to cause, every, he's going to bring every man into, into, into judgment based upon their deeds. He's going to, every man must give an account for the deeds that are done in his body. There's a, there's a judgment day coming. We want to act like there's no judgment day coming, that there's no giving an account for our lives. But Father has given us the very best life. And we are overwhelmed by all the things that we value and we then put his life on hold. And we know we're putting his life on hold because we're just so locked in and integrated to doing these things that our parents and our grandparents and society and culture says, we got to do them to be right. That's what man says. You got to do this to be right. Well, how about God saying, you've got to do this other thing to be right? So here we stand between two opinions. Am I going to go with mom and dad and culture and society and grandparents? Or am I going to go with God? If I'm in the life of Jesus and I'm willing to stay in that life of Jesus, it's going to have an evidence. It's going to have an outworking. It's going to have a fruit. It doesn't mean to say that we're not to go into every dimension of life and shine like lights and go into the workplace and go into the play place and go into every place and, 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 sh and, and have this life. It's just that the problem is, is we allow this life to be displaced by other cares. And, and, and the Lord lays out for us the spiritual principle and he lays out for us, if you would, the spiritual rules. And somehow we, we let this slip. We, we fail to go all the way with God. And... You know what I'm talking about here tonight. It's not a labor. Oh, oh I pray that God, you'll allow God to just energize you with a reality of how wonderful it is to live. Jesus said, he that hath, uh, John said, he that has Christ Jesus has life. And that he that does not have Christ Jesus does not have life. There is a spiritual death and there is an eternal death. And there's a spiritual life and it has an eternal life. There's a, there's a spiritual death that is an eternal death. It is the life of Satan and the demonic. Can you hear me? Yes. Maybe I need to be turned up. Because you know what? I, you know what I feel and sense? I know what... I, here's how it goes. Turn me up. Here's how it goes. Father purposes to begin to move his people, his church, into a dimension... A, a greater manifestation of his power and presence. It's just a simple result of our participation with him. It's a result of our believing. It's a result of our agreement with him. And as soon as that happens, it's like armies of demons are released from hell. It's like... All of a sudden, right, left, and center, things start coming at people from every single direction. And, and most people, it seems, have no ability to stand against that wind of demonic attack. They have no ability to recognize how to take a hold of the shield of faith. It's like somehow we just don't seem to make the connection that you must be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might to take unto yourself the whole armor of God, to live in this realm. And it's choices, it's value systems, it's things that you agree with, that you think through, that you meditate. Many of the things that we agree with is premeditated. You might be very impulsive and unconscious of your decisions and what you're doing by and large when you're just a little kid. But as you get older, it becomes to become, it begins to be meditative. Listen, I'm mad at them and I'm going to prove it to them. I'm going to punish them because they didn't do what I want them to do. I'm going to be mad at them. I'm going to let them know I'm mad at them. That's kind of premeditated. That's actually participating with the kingdom of darkness. It's making a choice to not live in the life of Jesus. And it really comes down to that, those kinds of simple responses that just cut us off. It, it, it's all of a sudden we, we, we go through a process and think, you know, wait a minute, I need more money. I need to build this bank account. I'm going to do this for this reason and that reason because I went to a special meeting the other night and they were telling me that the way I'm saving right now is not going to be enough for when I retire and I'm going to be out on the street and I'm going to be wishing that I had done something different. And I buy in on that hook, line, and sinker. And now I'm, I make a decision to begin to live my life 
and to commit myself to do things differently than what I committed when I was in the presence of the Lord. Christ Jesus came and he got you and I out of a mess. He got you and I out of an eternal death. He came and paid it off. And he said, listen to me. You know, he chose to Peter. He says, listen to me. If you hang on to your life, you listen to me, you're going to lose it. If you lose your life for my sake and for the kingdom, then you'll find it. Because Peter was just grappling with this thing that he's going to, you know, because it was just right at that moment of time where he was started telling the disciples that he's going to go to Jerusalem and he's going to be delivered up to men. And he's going to be persecuted by the elders and by the priest and by the scribes and that they will kill him. And that's where, that's where, they, that's where they stopped listening. He had more to say, but they stopped listening at that point. He said, but on the third day I shall rise. I shall be raised up. They didn't hear that part. He's deserving of everything. But all we have to give him is us. Do you have gold to give him? Does he need gold? What do you have to give him? Can you, can you pay off your house and give that to him? Does he need it? Does he even want it? No. He came and died. He came, left the riches of heaven, became poor, lived out a life of suffering and rejection and persecution to be crucified, to go in the hill, to suffer all the things for our sake because he wanted me. He wanted you. He wanted to bring us over into a place of life. He wanted to deliver us from this present death and this present evil. And then, and he's made it a choice. The Lord hasn't stripped our choice away. We just got to understand, people, that we live in a very difficult culture and difficult society is the hardest one to live in where you've got all of this love of ease and all this luxury and all this choice and you get to do whatever you want to do but what a great place we get what a great place of honor if we were being here in this opportunity that the rest of the world doesn't have that we would say yeah, I have all of this. I can do all of this. I have all this opportunity, but I don't want it. I want you, Lord Jesus. Show me how I can, in every way, just cooperate, cooperate with you, obey you. Show me, show me how I can begin to take the steps of moving out of, of the, the region and the realms of being ruled by my own need. And this is the, this boy, this really runs interference with the will of the Father. And it's somehow, somehow hard to step into this wisdom that comes from above that contrasts for us living under the influence of our need versus the will of the Father. And we could say it's the need of the Father. We could say living under our will, but I think it's more specific to say living under our need. It's what I want. This love of self. Father, we ask that the wind of the Spirit blow in our lives. Father, I ask that an overwhelming, thunderous reality of heaven strike the souls of men. For Father, I figure that if people can't get it in this place, where on earth will they get it? For Lord, I look around here tonight and I see so many people that are willing. I don't know how obedient they are, but they're willing. Father, we pray tonight that every one of us will resolve ourselves to be both willing and obedient. Father, I pray tonight that there would be a true exchange of our lives to where that, yeah, the, the recognition that you delivered us, the recognition that you saved us, the recognition that you've given us abundant life, but also saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not happy except for with you, Lord. Wait a minute. 
I don't even feel right about things unless I have your glory flowing out of me. And I want to understand now how to shut down the things that I've agreed with that steal this from me. Do you know what Jesus said? He made the contrast. He said, the thief has come. He didn't say Satan. He said, the thief. Because the thief can come in many different disguises. The thief can come in the, ways of your, in the way of your, your need and my need. The thief can come in, in the realms of circumstances that, that discourage us or steal from us our confidence. The thief can come as Satan. But he said, the thief has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. And I came that you could have life and that you could have it more abundantly. And then he tells us, that he's put a river of life on the inside of us, so it's ours. In other words, he says, not only did I come to give this to you, not only am I here for you to have this, not only is it a promise, but now, just simply because you are willing to respond to my invitation, I filled you up with the very fountainhead, with the very source of all this life. Now, when we come to this judgment on that day, we're going to stand there, and our eyes are going to be completely and totally open, and we're going to suddenly see... All this time, we had all the power of God right on the inside of us. All of a sudden, we're going to see that we had actually the kingdom was within us. That we had all the glory, the fountainhead, the wellspring, rivers, the very presence of the living God there, and we did not activate it. We did not respond to God in such a way to where that, that overwhelmed every dimension of our lives. Because circumstances situations decisions all circumstances situation choices imposed upon us pressure that resulted in us making decisions that were literally choosing things other than the way of the father the way of his life so we actually hung on to our life so we, some people think well when we lose our life that means we're going to go and we're going to go to ethiopia we're going to go to the Sudan. That's a big, big culture shift for everybody in this place. Yeri and Jaya, huge culture shift for you. No. He wants you to lose your life and have his life. So all of a sudden I say, his life is a treasure to me. In fact, it's on the inside of me as a treasure. I mean, if I, if I could just grab a hold of this thing and the eye, be able to see with the eyes of the Spirit tonight, and recognize, wait a minute, I have a treasure inside of me, as Paul said, in earthen vessels. And the excellency and the glory is not of me, it's of God. It's on the inside of me. And then when I find myself in these situations, when I find myself being overwhelmed, when I find myself in pain, when I find myself in sickness, when I find myself in temptation, when I find myself in discouragement, or whatever the situation may be, I go to the treasure. And I receive help and strength and power and divine ability because I'm being strengthened by the Spirit in my inner being. You don't need to come to church and now hear, hear me say, okay, please, please call Pastor Mark. Pray, have him pray that you be strengthened by the Spirit in your inner being. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning. My phone's off. Somebody say, you're, you're a pastor. You're supposed to always leave your phone on. I'm a pastor and I need to get sleep. I left my phone on one night the other night. One night. Always turn off. Left it on one night. What was it? 3 o'clock in the morning. 3.30 in the morning. It's just going up. Actually, I needed to use the alarm clock, and I didn't shut off the, you know, the ringer. When I, I'm like, whoa, it's already 6? There's somebody calling. That's just the way it is, you know, pastors. Abuse them. <laughs> Sometimes we think that that's a synonym. It's okay. If you're going to stand for what's right, you're going to be abused. That's what the Lord says. He said, all the godly shall suffer persecution. If you're not suffering persecution, you ain't living godly enough. 
Where it says, if you lose your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is Jesus talking about? I'm going to go, I'm going to go, lie, I'm going to go, I'm going to go die. I'm going to lay down my life. I'm going to be killed. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. Because I'm going to live my life not for my needs and not for your needs and not for my interest and not for your interest, but for the will of the Father. Because this is life. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you'll follow me and if you'll do what I'm doing, and he's not telling us that we've got to go and be crucified. He's not telling us that. He's telling us that we've got, we have to be willing to lay down our life for one another to go to the extreme, to do the will of the Father, to where that it isn't about living for our own need. It's literally living his life. And I'm telling you, in, in this context, Paul can say, all my tribulations, I'm exceeding glad because I'm living up here in this life of Jesus Christ. So it doesn't matter what's coming at me. It doesn't matter how many times I've been beaten, how many times I've been stoned. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you right now, i got joy on speaking from full of glory. i got peace of past understanding. I, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm exceeding glad. I'm going to tell you right now, there is no place like getting hit with the joy as soon as you start suffering persecution and the, and the house starts coming in. But I'm going to tell you now, you need to get joy in the house when everything's going easy because if you can't have joy when everything's going easy, you're not going to have joy. You're not going to be able to yield the joy that will overwhelm you when things are going bad. If you can't keep up, you know, with the footman, oh, guys, slow up. You're wearing me out. I, do we have to have church all the time? You must, do go so, must you go so late? Must we pray in town so long? <laughs> What do you expect of us? I mean, why do you want us to live this abundant life? Please, slow up, please. Can we take a rest? Then what will you do in the day of trying to keep up with the horsemen? When it's all about miracles, signs and wonders, raising of the dead, staying up all night because you're so energized with the power of God. And it's harvest time. Nobody gets any sleep in harvest time. Huh? It's true. You get in the harvest time, the best time that you have to start harvesting, the best thing for harvesting is to start at about 4 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, the dew's still there. You get, a, you, get, you get going at it before the heat of the day comes on. Hmm, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And I'm, prepared, I'm getting prepared, man. I want to be able to, look, you want to be able to step in the midst of everything Satan can throw at you and you don't even feel nothing. Because you chose to live in the secret place. You chose to live in the midst of his glory. You chose to live in the place where you're strong, the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. You made choices continually to lose your life. I don't care about it. It's not important to me. You're important to me, Jesus. Those decisions are going on all, all the time. I'm not interested in my life. What can I do for you? What would you have of me? I'm not going to be sad when you want me to be glad. I'm going to represent you. I'm not going to be worried and feel full of condemnation when you've given me your peace. Jesus died for me to have his peace. I want you to think about it. Jesus died for you to have his peace, a peace that passes understanding, a peace that the world cannot take away. Behold, I give you a peace, a peace that nothing can disturb, Jesus said. And then all of a sudden, you're dealing with condemnation? I'd get up. I'd get fighting mad, man. I'd start throwing a bed around or whatever. You know, whatever it takes. I mean, I would get aggro about shutting that thing down if I were you. I would understand how to take up above everything else the shield of faith. Are you able to discern in your life where you are under the attacks and the assailment of the enemy and you can define that as a fiery dart? Or is it just like you just don't even think about it, you just kind of like deal with everything kind of, you know, all in one category. Probably not. If you deal with everything in one category, I would doubt you're dealing with anything. Because there's, God gives us wisdom. He gives us an awareness. He gives us a consciousness. These are fiery darts of the wicked. I'm tired of seeing God's people that are anointed and ordained to do great exploits continually live under the, 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 the railing accusations and the belittlement, and really, the right word, I was about to say it, bereavement, of supposed lost opportunities of Satan. You ain't lost nothing. You don't lose nothing until your breast's done. God could do more in a day with you than, come on. Father could do more in just a short period of our time, of our life, if it just, just it would just let him train us to be completely hid away in him, 
Let him train us to live in the glory of his presence, to live baptized in the fire of his presence. It's a choice that you make. When you choose to be sad, upset, angry, disgruntled, grumpy, you're choosing not to live in the fire of his glory. Well, I didn't, I didn't choose it. I woke up like this. <laughs> well, you might have woke up like that, but you could have got out of it real quick by a choice. You could have been filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. You could redeem the day for it's evil. Redeem the time, rather, because the days are evil. You've got to remember, people, we are now living in a place, we're living in a crisis moment. You know, as I was saying on Sunday, and it's just so beating in my heart and and, and we've got to hear it. And I praise God for those of you who are here to hear it. More people need to be here to hear it. I pray, praise God for the people that are listening right now on the web or on YouTube to hear it. You need to hear it. I know that Satan's doing everything he possibly can do to keep people from hearing this message. But we are living in a time where the love of many will wax cold because iniquity abounds. We're living in an evil day. Our president is standing up and saying that we don't have the love of God because we don't accept homosexual marriage. And they are taking every evil, every evil approach to twist the scripture to bring men of, of, and women of God into a place of being intolerant, you know, angry people. We'll be hated by all the world. By every, all the world, every nation for his namesake. We live in a, we live in a time that's perilous. Men are deceiving and being deceived. We're living in a time where iniquity abounds. We're living in a time where we're closer to that, that day of apostasy and already, I've already seen, the Lord already showed me, I saw, the, I began to see the apostasy of the church that I heard about all of my life, knowing I'm living in the last days, but did never, never saw the apostasy of the church until about, it was about uh, 10 years ago, a little less than 10 years ago, I said, that is the apostasy of the church. That's where the church is going. It's apostate. It's going in, into a realm of calling good evil and evil good. They're going into a realm of accepting sin as commonplace and that God somehow has already forgiven it so you can go on and sin and it's, and it's fine. It's acceptable to the Lord. And now it's grown to a whole other level. And with that, there is, there, it's like Satan has almost, it's like he's given more right to harass us more. It's like, there's just that much more garbage and, 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 and pressure, if, as, as it were, coming at us from the satanic realm. And you're going to have to know how to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of His might. You're going to have to know how to take under yourself the whole armor of God. You're going to understand that's not just for Sunday mornings. Okay, it's Sunday morning. We've got to put on the whole armor. I had a guy come to me one time and he said, and I was in a meeting, I was in a meeting, and... and, and uh, we were doing a crusade, and <laughs> and uh, and a friend of he he told a friend of mine who was with me. He said, "I want to go in there and uh, help the man of God get ready." And he, and a friend of mine said, "You don't want to do that." <laughs> and uh, so he came in and he said, "I want to I want to help you get ready." I said, "What what?" And my, my other friend is a minister friend is standing at the door going. He said, I want to help you get your armor on. I said, get out of here. Help me put my armor on. He no help but put my armor on. I never took it off. It's like all of a sudden we got to put our armor on because we're going to go preach or we're going to do Sunday morning or Sunday night. We're all going to get our armor on and get your sword, get your shield. Hey, how do you want my helmet is that? I left it in here in the closet. I gave, gave me a break. 
taking yourself the whole armor of God is something that we become consciously aware of that is ours, that is our defense in Him. It's a supernatural presence of God that we participate with, that we allow to be activated by building up ourselves in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, taking unto ourselves all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, making the things of the Spirit more important than the things of the natural. Boy, we're going we're gonna to get that food in our stomach and get our coffee and get our whatever. But what about the more important things? We're making a choice about our life. And, 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 and this is hard. This is difficult for people who live in our culture. It's not so difficult for the Chinese because for them, there was before Christ and after Christ. That's it. They had a life before, and now they got a new life, and it's defined for them, and all their life is about living for Jesus. And that's the best thing they got going, and their parents are devastated because they were supposed to go. There's one child per family, and that makes the whole family, uh, you know, either rich or poor, you know, proud or shamed. And now they're not going to go to University of Beijing. They're going in the mission field. Well, what's up with that? It is a total abandonment. So... If we ask Father, say, Lord, I really want to understand how to live this life. He's going to be all excited because that's why the Holy Ghost came to show us how to live this life. And he's telling us to acknowledge him. He's telling us to recognize him. He's telling us to yield to him. He's telling us to put him first. He's given us laid out principles for us, which you'll hear me preach every time I stand here in this place. And sometimes Satan so runs interference with the most important thing that you need to put into place because he starts browbeating you because you're so used to being condemned and so used to feeling like a failure and so been immersed into a culture where you're always getting corrected and your papers look like a road map to, you know, some unknown place. It's so marked up. Huh? It's just like the devil. Train you through shame. Jesus, help us. Can you just do this when you get up in the morning? Can you just do this when you get up in the morning? Can you just begin to say, Holy Spirit, I want, you to st I want you to take over. I want you to define life for me. I've been defining life. I've been letting people define life for me. I've been letting my culture define life for me. I've been letting my parents define life for me, my grandparents define life for me. I've been living after that value system. And Father, I want to stop. I want to live the way you define life for me. I want to make the things important that you've made important to me. See, men says say, God says give. What are you going to do? Huh? Save? Did you say save? Because, I mean, that's really the way it goes down. Men say save. God says give. God never said save. God never one time said save. The only thing he told you to save or lay up was riches in heaven. And the only way he said you could lay up riches in heaven was to give what you got in the earth. So, I mean, give what you have in the earth, save in heaven. Amen. I mean, that's just one principle. That's just one dimension. It's just one slice. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's just like I opened up and said, what you're doing in the natural, what you're doing in the physical, you're doing in the spiritual. And it, that's why God said, if you, can't, if you can't be faithful with unrighteous mammon or finances or money or a money system or a trade system, who's going to give to you the true riches? Because all you got to do is hoard it, hang on to it, and make people pay for it. I had to get it the hard way. You're going to have to get it the hard way too. I got my own on my own. You're going to have to go get your own on your own. That's man. I always want a handout. It's true. It's man. The Lord says, God, I'm going to give it to you freely. I give it to you. I give it to you. Freely you give. Free, freely, freely you receive. I see people walk around freely receive anointing, got bodyguards and acting like they something, that they got something because they deserved it. Get nothing because they deserve it. God gave it to you. have no right to be making yourself some kind of king and lord and some superstar. That's an abuse of the anointing. That's making merchandise of the anointing. Father, I, I just told the Lord, Father, help me. Just let me stay in a realm, always, no matter where I'm at with you. 
that I never act like I earned anything from you because you don't earn nothing. Father gives liberally. You receive it freely. You don't even get to go into it till you receive it freely. And you don't even get to be understanding. You don't understand how to freely receive and freely give until you begin to do the same thing in the, with, with the way you have relationships with people around you, with the way that you give, with the way that you do, uh, you, you know, and interact with all those people that God has brought in your life. Everybody's here. God brought all these people in your life. One day he's going to say, how, did you, how well did you take care of Michael? I brought him in. Mike, how did you, well did you take care of him? Did you receive him as me? As, as you would receive me? And that goes for everybody. Men get in the realms of partiality. Well, not pretty enough, not tall enough. Huh? Not fat enough, not skinny enough, not short enough. Whatever. Lord said, I want you to lose your life. I want, you, I want to show you how to live a different way. I want you to leave from the realms of living by your five senses. Put a blindfold on. Put plugs in your ears. See how you do. You're not going to be comfortable with that. Try it. You're not going to be comfortable with it. Because you live by your five senses too much. So what if I say, okay, Papa, I, I want to see through your eyes. I'm not going to let my eyes be part of a stumbling block. I don't want to, I know my ears, my senses, my touch, my, any part of my being to lead me away from you. Stumbling. Stumbling. You know that Jesus didn't even use the word sin? Did you know that? He used scandalon to create an offense. Offense against two. Pops. A scandal on, a scandal, a stumbler, a stumbling block, a trip. Something that trips you up. From what? Doing what Father wants you to do. Living your life the way he defined it. Who defined life? Did your did United States culture or Western culture define life? Did you did you define life? Did your daddy define life? Did your grandpa define life? Who defined life? God defined life. So then we got to get hungry and say, wait a minute. You defined life. It's amazing. The Lord defines life with, with thousands of insights for us. And all people can remember is, well, he that provides not for his own is worse than infidel denied the faith. And then they got a corollary verse scripture, be fervent in business. So you can run out wide open at work, run over top of everybody and act like an idiot. Or, or moron, those are the two, those two words are synonyms. It's an Arabic word, actually. So I have an Arabic derivative, moron. The Arabic derivative, that's literally a fool. One who is unconscious of God's existence or one who denies God's existence. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Well, it's just as bad to live like there is no God. Are you with me? Hallelujah. Huh? Wisdom in Jesus' name. I love to see people get wisdom. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just try to break it all down for you. We, none of us, none of us can do this of ourselves. None of us can do this on our own. That's why the Holy Spirit's come to lead us and guide us. He's come to give us insight. That's why Jesus said you can do nothing of yourself. So then you need to measure what you are doing of yourself. Because that would kind of help. If you, if you can't get it one way, get it the other way. The things that the Lord wants us to do, we can't do of ourselves. We've got to depend upon Him, rely upon Him to do it. And the beautiful thing of it is, it's, just, it's not that difficult. It's okay, Holy Spirit, I give myself to you. I give myself to you. I want, I, I, I want to be led by you. And then I want to understand how to access that divine power, that divine strength, that divine ability, that place that takes me from being self-conscious to having boldness and confidence in you. And then he'll show you, show you how to, he'll show you how to go to prayer and inside of 30 minutes be vibrating with the glory of heaven. Hallelujah. Just be overwhelmed with his presence. How to get there quickly. How to begin to take your five minutes and your 10 minutes, your drive, your, 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 your commutes, instead of just staring out the window. 
away in God. Huh? Go so away in God that you don't even answer the phone. Driving, commuting, sitting in your house, sitting at your table. I rarely pray before I eat. <gasps> I rarely pray before I eat. I pray while I'm eating. Hallelujah. I'll break out right in the middle of the eggs, right in the middle of it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. And I'm always much more thankful after I have tasted it. Uh, I taste it. I, oh, this is good. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I love the inspiration. I don't like to do any, I don't like to do things just because you're supposed to do them ritually. I've never been ritual, very ritual. <laughs> are very traditional and and just because I, I don't want to be doing something that's just coming out of my head I want it to come from my heart that's why if it's traditional it's coming from my heart fine there's sometimes I'll just get hit with hymns and I'll sing hymns throughout the day it's not tradition I'm hit with it Jesus said I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly Father's called you and me to come live in the life and it's a choice that we make his already chose. You're going to have to talk God into this. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're filled up with this life, you will not want the filth of this world. I don't care how big the temptation is. In fact, if it is, the temptation actually decreases as the manifest glory of His presence increases in your life. It just decreases. You just don't even, you don't even, it doesn't have any. And reality of it is, is you can even see that just by, just on the terms of resisting things because there are things that, that everybody in this place, at some time, you had something going on in your life that you knew was wrong, but you just really didn't know how to stop it. You didn't know how to quit. It was just too big. But then all of a sudden, you came to a place, you said, no, I'm not going to have it anymore. And after a while, you know, it wasn't even temptation anymore. And now it wouldn't even be a temptation. Huh? There's probably people in here at one time that you, 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 you probably like smoke cigarettes or something which is crazy you know? and you know you thought well I can never uh, I've got to always do this and now you can't even imagine I mean somebody just gets it around you and you probably are just got to go get some air same way with all other sin it isn't that difficult to resist it Satan creates a lie and an illusion around it making it so important so valuable so meaningful the only way you can do that is where people have really let other sensations and especially the five senses and the effects of the body and gratificated, gra you know, living out of, a, out of gratifying their need and so exalting their need to just have a huge impact. Stop that stuff. Paul said, I beat under my body and I keep it in submission though, lest I being a preacher should in the end be a castaway. So that really helps everybody that believes that once you're saved, you're always saved. Paul didn't believe that. Otherwise, he would have, it, what, many of the things that he said, just like the verse of Scripture I just quote, would have been absolutely meaningless. No, it's, it's commitment. It's commitment. He that endures, he that endures into the end, the same shall be saved. I'm going to endure into the end by the help and the grace of God. I'm in this. I love eternal life, which is the God life. I love abundant life. I don't like eternal death, which is the death life, the death existence, rather, the satanic existence, because it's not a life, right? It's an existence. It's a being. We choose. So, or you could say, well, you know, I don't like the satanic realm, but, you know, I like the man, the man kind of realm. Am I just still comfortable? I'm just comfortable. I'm just comfortable. I, I like getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning and going to work and, and working till 5 and then coming home and cleaning the house and doing the dishes and cooking and, you know, and then just, you know, living a simple little life and, uh, and then going to bed. And then, and then sometimes on Saturdays we take a drive up onto the, into the hills and, 
And I just like the simple little life. It's, it's, it's really funny, but there's too many people that are that way. There are various different dimensions of that. You chose another life. You chose a different kind of life. I want you to go to the Word of God, and I want you to begin to examine the beauty and the splendor of the life of God. I want you to look at the life of Jesus. I want you to look at the life that God has promised us, described us to us more, and say, just ask him, do you want that? Because I can't imagine anyone saying, I don't want that. <laughs> I heard this guy on a commercial today. He said, I have dedicated myself to eradicating cancer. And my response was, not before me. Jesus already eradicated it. And all I got to do is step into the life of it and it will be made manifest through my life. And that stepping into the life of it is choices that I make in the morning when I wake up and the attitudes that I, I'm willing to go with. The things that I'm willing to allow my mind to meditate on. The places where I put my treasure and what I value, what I make important. If all of those are, all of those are put over where they need to be in relationship with the Lord, everything changes. Reality of it is when the, everything is put over in, with, in relationship with the Lord, Satan can't access you and condemn you, make you feel like a failure, make you give you all these imaginations because he don't have no string to pull on. He can only put on attachments to this world and affections on this earth and things that you like and want that have nothing to do with God. When all of your desires and all of your wants and all your needs are in God, Satan can't do nothing. He's screamed from a distance. That's about it. And it's like, shut up. Because <laughs> it doesn't pull on your heart, it doesn't pull on your emotions. <laughs> Hallelujah. I woke up the other night and I was, I was overwhelmed by this, this condemnation and this, I was overwhelmed by this sense of fear and trepidation and separation as it were from the Lord and I said Lord what on earth is this what is this what in the hell is this because that's wh where it's from not on earth it's in hell what in the hell is this I didn't say that way but it just came to me just now because <laughs> that's what it is that's, that's the category you know and I, I just was aware that that's what people are dealing with and, and, I, and I thought, is, are there people who have no ability to just throw this thing off? Do you, and, and they're just overcome with it, they're just overwhelmed with it, and they've got to live in it. They've got to live in a sense of, of such rejection and failure and condemnation and shame and distance from the Lord. Well, I bust that thing right now. I tell you, it's really easy to get out of it. And, and if, if you're ever hit with that at night, don't lay there in it. Just get up and begin to worship him. Don't begin to question him and interview him. Lord, how do you feel about me? Oh, God, is there something wrong? Because in that state, my goodness, you've got all kinds of interference going on you. Now, what sound waves are going to hit you? What, you're on the wrong station. You want to switch stations quickly. Just begin to worship and begin to praise and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost until all of a sudden an authority will hit you. I'm, I've got a hold of something right now and a break it. I'll tell you right now, it's depression. It'll drag you into hell. It'll drag you into hell now. And, and if you allow it to go on, where does it end? It could end, it could end in hell. I'm going to break that thing tonight. I want to bust that thing. I want to break it off of you. Lying, condemning, harassing, tormenting stuff you're supposed to be living in the comfort of the Holy Ghost Whew. you talking about being babied you talking about being well taken care of and protected and sheltered Ooh, I'm sheltered hallelujah I mean he's a shelter in every generation he's a shelter hallelujah uh, you talking about always being full of joy 
Hallelujah. No, having this confidence because my heart doesn't condemn me. Allah bolster. Look at, look at Job, how he was able to stand in such an intense assailment where it looked like it was directly from God against him. No one shall take my uprightness from heart, of heart from me. No one shall take my integrity, my position, my standing. I know that I am righteous before him. I know that I have not transgressed. I know who I am in God. And it was almost at the point of making God unjust. He was so upholding his righteousness, it was like he was making God unrighteous. He'd done nothing wrong and did nothing to deserve anything and it ain't going to be laid on him, it don't matter who it is. Come on, people, to have such a boldness, to have such a shield of faith so that you can quench every fiery dart of the wicked. Hallelujah. To have your uprightness being in Christ Jesus. I know my Redeemer lives and He stands upon the earth in the last days and He's standing right here in me right now. Hallelujah. To get you so confident that you can go and easily say to people, I am one of the data points that God exists. I am a pr living proof that Jesus Christ is who He said He was and that He did not just live historically and die historically. He also raised up historically, and he's right here right now, and he wants to prove himself to you. Are you real, or you just want to go ahead on believing whatever it is that you believe? I messed up one time, I, and, and I'll never do it again by God's help and grace. Usually I just go with the impressions of the Holy Ghost, but I was in a place, and it was just everything was opposed to me doing this. But I saw a guy, and as soon as I saw him, the Lord said, ask him how long is he going to run from me? I know right now, if I would have gone to that guy, because he kept looking over at me, he knew something was going on. He knew something was going on. And I didn't really look at him, I just kind of glanced at him, because I heard, I was standing in line getting ready to pay for the golf fees. Okay, I'm going to let you know what was going on. Okay, it was in it, and we were getting ready to go golfing, and the Lord just, the Lord said, Ask him, how long is he going to run for me? I know it would have busted the thing wide open. And I didn't do it. And they, those things kind of burn on you, you know. Do I feel guilty? No. I feel honored that the Lord would give me such insight. Huh? Should have I done it? Yes. Did I say, Father, forgive me? Yeah. Do I feel guilty? No. It's all done with. Am I condemned? Uh-uh. That's like years ago, man. <laughs> I mean, how much stuff are people going to pile up on their head? Because if you don't release it, it means you retain it. And then how much stuff are you retaining after 10 years? <laughs> all the wrong things that you did, all the things that you should have done, done differently, the, 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 the imp strong impressions you receive, it's all let it go. And we take it to heart. It's okay, Father, I want to get established in this. I'm not going to live in guilt. I'm not going to live in shame. I'm not going to live in failure. Huh? I'm not going to live in regret. I'm going to live over here in confidence and boldness. I'm going to be built up. I'm going to participate. I'm being prepared unto every good work. So if I'm being prepared unto every good work, then I mean I'm in the good works. I'm doing the good. Hallelujah. Because if you're not doing the good, you can't get prepared for, the, for more good. You got to, are you with me? You can't be doing bad getting prepared for good. Can't be doing wrong getting prepared for right. Can't be doing it out of the human ability to be prepared to do it by divine ability. Harasate, shitata. Sutarade, shitaino, sita. Sitaino. You can't sit around and, and, and speculate about how poor you're going to be for the rest of your life and never be rich. Huh? And you're never going to go over into the divine wealth the Father has for you if you're spending your whole life thinking about how your arm of, of ability is going to make it happen. Because what you're going to make is barely going to cover your overhead. It ain't going to put, a, it ain't gonna put a, a dent in the need, okay, in the, 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 the kingdom of God to go reach the lost and take care. You know, there's 500, there's 500 million orphans out there not eating properly. Or clothed properly. 
You're barely making your overhead. Squeezing out a few, few drops to save in your little piggy bank. Jesus, we need to step over into a miracle. There's an abundant life, a miracle in every dimension. Financially, physically, whew, hallelujah. Whew. Spiritually, hallelujah. Eternally, and eternal consequences. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not going to spend a day in hell. I'm not going to spend a minute in hell. My dad's generation, they all went down to hell, saw hell, all those evangelists. They all went and saw and visit hell. I don't want to visit hell. I do not want to visit hell. Lord, please give me a burden for the lost another way. I would rather get a burden for the lost by visiting heaven. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, help us. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 We want you to get so built up in the faith, so confident in God, that you can do anything. Because nothing's impossible for you in Him. Without Him, we can do nothing, but by, but by Him, we can do all things. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's the abundant life. I command fear. Go! You foul spirit of hell. You listen to me. I smash you now. You foul spirit of hell that brings reproach and accusation. It's the servants of the Most High God. I bind you now. And you work. Somebody said, must you yield? Maybe not. But it comes out real strong. Ha, ha, ha. to say. Pine will I make sure that I'm heard everywhere. Amen. Taxiety and amate. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe Carlos believes it has an effect. He's always telling him, turn the speakers up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. God has purpose that you be bold in the faith. You be bold in faith. That's probably one of the great rewards is he that does the work of a deacon does a good work and purchases unto himself great boldness in the faith. There's a reward. A reward is boldness in the faith. That's Father. What Father wants for you is boldness in the faith. There's no second class citizens in heaven. There's no body that God relegated to poverty. There's no God, there's no place that, that God has put for a certain number of Christians to stay powerless and full of shame. He's made us all one in Christ Jesus. There is no distinction. There is no difference. The only thing that sorts out differences is, is choices that people make. And it's different than gradations of agreement with God. And if you go all the way to completely agree with God, to say, I'm going to live your life. I'm not going to live out of human need. I'm not going to be entangled with the cares of this life. I'm not going to allow the deceitfulness of, 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 of riches and the pleasures of this world and all of that nonsense to, to have an attachment to my affections. I'm set my affections upon things above. I've been delivered out of this world system. I've been delivered out of the kingdom of darkness. I've been delivered out of darkness and its reign of terror. And now I, be I belong to the kingdom of dear son. There is no governmental power that has, that, that has a greater position or a greater place of authority than Christ Jesus in where we're living. We're supposed to be, and then in, we live in this realm, we'll make disciples out of nations. We'll go tell the king what he's thinking, the secrets of his heart. We'll tell him what's going to go down next. Does there need to be prophets to this nation? Yeah, there needs to be prophets to this nation. I mean, I'm talking about prophets, uncompromising prophets. They're going to talk about the deal, dealing with the real issue. Not some conspiracy theory issues. Deal with the real issues of sin and unrighteousness and iniquity, first in the church and second in the government.
Are you listening to me? This is important. Because I, I don't, I, don't I, I believe right now there is a great need for prophets to this nation and prophets to the nation to bring people back to God, to live in the realms of heaven and doing that which is right. So why don't you do it? So don't why? You're going to have to have great boldness of the faith to do that. You got to have boldness and confidence begin to flow in that kind of realm of the anointing. You can't be walking around hanging ahead, shamed, overwhelmed, burdened, distraught of whether, you know, come on. You can't be worried about whether or not you have enough money to pay the mortgage on your house or whether you're going to lose your job. That's the battle you fight? Your employment? Just forget that life. I, I'd say in that tonight. In that life tonight. Because that's no life. That's a prison. That's a prison. If your job, the way you're living right now, is not consecrated to God, and it's all about your testimony in the kingdom of God, you need to get rid of that thing. Because you're living in a prison. You're living in a system that belongs to this world. And you choose, you choose in your own life. And yeah, you're going to have torment there. And yeah, there's going to be upheaval in your house. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's a disease and it spreads. And the only cure for it is surrender to the living God to heal you, take away your reproach, and take away your shame. Tonight, those of you who are here that, that, that have been living your own life and doing your own thing and your job is about you, why don't you put it on the altar? Why don't you put it on the altar? Why don't you consecrate it to the Lord? Why don't you say, Lord, I'm going to live for you from now on in my job. I'm not going to make my job first. I'm going to make my job second. In fact, I'm going to make it third or fourth. All right, get your job done when you get around to it. You know what I'm saying? Because you'll make sure you're going to take care of God instead of you know, doing God's work when you get around to it. Let's flip this thing around. Oh, Father, we're going to take care of you when we get around to it. Right now we got this and that and the other thing. And he's four. I'm, I'm concerned that there's too many people have the kingdom of God fourth, not first, fourth. Some of the better folks are third, have the kingdom of God third. That's not what Papa said. And you're never going to have the life that he said and described until you do it his way, because he's not going to conform to your way. You listen to me. Hallelujah. Prostatilitai. Don't you go telling me about how you got to work and all those other things, because I'm telling you right now, we did, we've done that. I do that. Paul did it. Huh? He made tents and preached the gospel and lived for the kingdom of God. Your job and your identity in this world better not be consuming you. How do you define yourself? I want you to look at it tonight. I'm going to close. How do you define yourself? How do you perceive your life? What is most important to you? If you sit down and you honestly took a look at the way your life is run and what you're doing with your life and you, and you listed those things out, what would that look like if you have 10 items? What would it look like? You describe your daily life to me. What's really important to you? What really concerns you? What you must have? what you can't let go of, what you're not comfortable with if you're not doing. I want you to get to, I want you to, get to a place where you don't need any of it. You're ready. You're, you're, you just want to go to heaven. And when you want to just go to heaven, you're living in heaven. I'm telling you right now. Hallelujah. Well, none of this stuff. None of this stuff. None of this stuff matters. Abraham described it like this. He dwelled in tents so that he could testify to everyone that he was seeking the kingdom. He had no dwelling place here. I'm going to live in a tent. In my heart, I'm going to live in a tent. And I'm just to encourage you. I encourage you, come live in a tent. In your heart, live in a tent. Don't, hold, don't you have an attachment to anything in this world where you got to have it. And you're just, you're clutching it because that's all you get. Whatever you're clutching and hanging on to, that's what you get for eternity. Can you just imagine somebody clutching their car forever?
Lay hold on Jesus. Stand with me. Lay hold on Jesus. Lay hold. Let me say this. Say it this way. Lay hold on eternal life. Grab it, clutch it, don't let go of it. That's the life of God. That's the life of Jesus. He's given us the greatest riches. Jesus said, holy men, prophets and holy men of old, wise men sought to hear these things that you heard, hear, heard and have not heard them. Understand the things which you've been told, but did not understand them. I pray tonight that you will not take for granted what Father has given to you that you will not be unaware of the day of your visitation. That you will not be such that you can discern when it's going to be bad weather or foul weather, but you can't discern the times that you're living in. And thus unable to properly react and pro re prepare, properly react to God and properly prepare for the things that you're going to have to deal with. I'm, God is calling you and me to a place of being consecrated to his life. His life defines holiness. His life defines righteousness. His life defines everything that is good. His life defines heavenly, the heavenly realm. His life defines everything. Could you imagine missing out on the kingdom of God and burning in a place called hell, living with a bunch of devils and demons and everybody who hates you for eternity? If it's a real place, it is a real genuine thing that's going down. I'm going to make sure I'm going to miss it. I'm going to do everything I can possibly do to make sure everybody that I come in contact with misses it. While all the time, the glory of the greatest expression of life is going down forever and you're missing out on it just because you couldn't let go of some little temporal thing. You had to have it, and it was more important to you than everything else. Somebody said, can it really be that bad? I mean, yeah, it is, because one compromise leads to another, to another, to another, to another. It's an open door for sin and for the powers of darkness to rush in and destroy everything about you and everybody else. And it just works its way. It works its, it works its, subtle, it works its subtle way through our lives to where all of a sudden we... We wake up one morning and we're just full of doubt and unbelief. And we don't care anymore. Well, that, we're just not going to let that happen. You're going to give yourself over tonight. Just dedicate yourself, consecrate yourself to this, to this life. Whew. Can you feel that? I live in that. Some people need to come to a special meeting and get filled with joy. I live in that. Some people need to go to a special meeting and get full of peace. I live in that. Some people need to go to a special meeting and get full of love. I live in that. Some people need to go to a special meeting to get filled of goodness. I live in that. Some people need to go to a special meeting to get deliverance. I don't need any of that. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. It's about the life. He says, if you hang on to your life, you're not gonna, you're not gonna find it. If you lose it, it's yours. You can have the eternal life. And I'm saying, okay, I'm going to do that. I get that. I get that. I don't want to live my life. I want to live the life that you've given to me by the Holy Ghost. I don't live the life of the Spirit. Hallelujah. I'm going to live the life of goodness and joy and peace and, and forgiveness and mercy. And that really comes a lot down to hugging my wife a lot, telling her that I love her and, you know, getting around to cooking her breakfast when I have an opportunity. Huh? It, and, and, and hugging my kids and telling them that I love them and blessing them and it's got to start at the house. I'm going to walk around the place screaming and hollering, living in it. And, you know, we, we, her and I are at, at odds and just put on a happy face. We get here, oh, well, I don't like you very much. And, you know, unsaid, but you know, when, we get to, when we get to church, you got to smile and make it look like we're, we're good because we're leadership. That ain't leadership. That, everybody's going to get hit with the unseen. That's right. And then just loving the household of faith, loving God's people. There's so much of just bailing out, divorcing 
you know, lying, cheating, stealing, wrong attitudes, wrong doing towards others. Just understand that whatever you do, the least of these you do it to me. I mean, just have that conversation with the Lord. Go, really? Even that, so, even so and so? Yeah, even him. Even so and so? Yeah, even her. Oh, God, forgive me. <laughs> you know? Then all of a sudden, it's a new context. Because all, I, I just start living what he said. Just do what he said. What he said to do, just simply. Praise God. Anybody troubled here tonight? Troubled in your spirit? Anybody troubled? Anybody overwhelmed and oppressed with condemnation and fear and torment? I tell you, in Jesus' name, you set free, you delivered. I tell you, in the name of Jesus, that thing can't work around here. Don't belittle someone else because you open up the door for Satan to belittle you a whole lot. Don't participate with demon spirits. You open up a door for demon spirits to come run over top of you. When the door is open, they hate you. See, if God didn't hold back Satan, look at what he could do. Like he did with Job. God didn't hold back Satan. He, Satan called fire, brought fire down out of heaven, burned up his stuff, sent a whirlwind to destroy his, the house with all of his children in it. Seven sons and two daughters, right? Satan has a lot of, Satan, it, it's God's restraint upon Satan. The miracles that we experience in our life, the way that God has kept us, the miracles, one after another, I'm telling you, sometimes we think that the angels have to work overtime for us. And <laughs> the provision. Who? The things that we have to be thankful for. Nobody's sick. Nobody's dead. Mom might be a little bit in pain, but she's getting out of it right now. She's got to quit trying to be a heavyweight lifter. <laughs> Lifting on working so hard. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> in Jesus' name. Yeah. Now, she told me, she said, well, I'm supposed to go to Zambia and raise the dead, and here I am in pain. Well, get out of it right now. No, I told her, no, you need to rest. I'm, you need to slow down. But you, you need to slow down, not be in pain. How are you doing now? Lift your hands towards heaven. Amen. Bend and shout. Now, Jesus, look at me. Remember that first time that you remember that first time you got hit with divine healing? You were in intense pain. Remember that? And you started you started jumping and shouting, leaving and shouting. That just changed. It flows just as easy, comes just as easy, just as available. It's not, it's not titered out to us. The Lord says, you know what? I, I'm just going to give you, oh, I'm going to give you $10 worth of healing. <laughs> I'm going to put uh, 50 pounds of healing in your account. When you use it wisely, when you run out, that's it. Well, it's not stingy like that. It's unlimited. Might as well feel just, it's not trillions, it's unlimited. That's how rich you are. Did you know that you were that wealthy? You're starting to know it right now. Hallelujah. And until you know that, you can never spend it. Still, you're just wondering about it. You're still guessing. And that's why he says faithless and perverse. Faithless because they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. Huh? Perverse because everybody's listening to a bunch of wrong nonsense doctrine. They got all mixed up. They're looking on what they see more than what God said. They, their minds and their, and their understanding has been perverted. They no longer in direct contact with God. They're in direct contact with man and their own need. That's why he's saying that. The audience, look at the audience. There was a crowd. 
there was the man's boy, the unbelieving man, the demon-possessed boy, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, nine disciples, and 70 others also. And those are the ones. And I guarantee you, faithless and perverse first came down to the nine. Second, it fell upon the head of the 70. Huh? After that, he just kind of swept through the Pharisees and the Sadducees with one stroke. Huh? Then it was on the man and the crowd. Finally, it was on the... It was on... Well, the boy was probably wasn't even on the boy. Because he wasn't... He was possessed. He had no freedom to choose. Possession is no freedom to choose. Somebody said, I can't smile. You're possessed. <laughs> I can't be happy. You're possessed. You have no freedom to choose. You're possessed. Uh, I'm not going to be possessed. I'll be happy right now. The only thing I can't be and I don't want to be is sad. Right? Can, can, you, can, can we get a hold of that? You know, I'm just making up my own life as I go. No, you're not. Because you'd be happy all the time. Just listen. Could, could you imagine the busting through past every influence of this sin-cursed world? Yes, you would say, I'm never being sad again. You're going to have to deal with the prince of the power of the air in, a, in, a, in, a, in an incredible way. And God is giving you the power to do it because he's giving you the ability, you and I, the ability to never be sad again. That's joy unspeakable, full glory. Never be condemned again. That's peace that passes understanding. And peace of the world can't take away because peace is all about the absence of condemnation. That's why he says peace to them that are near and to those that are far away. Come on in. That means there's no condemnation. Are you listening to me? I mean, can, can, we, can we get that? Can we grab it? Can we reach in and grab it? Grab it with everything that we've got. Wrap our hands and fingers and arms and legs and toes around it and grip it with everything? Huh? Yeah, we can. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Kurosai Hallelujah. 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 Bonanega sika no mongiaka. Bonanega poka nea sia la boat. Hallelujah. Handa si boda nea si bakadea si. Hala boda davre based. Hey, Jonathan, get happy. Lift your hands towards heaven. Practice happy. There you go. Si boda mosatera. Hallelujah. Don't think about other things. Just think about one thing being happy from here on. Don't be happy. One track mind. Happy. Last, thanks, thankful, thankful, <laughs> thankful. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I want you to come and worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings. And let me just say, you guys have been putting finances into good ground. We were able to bless uh, Brother Yun and back to Jerusalem with about $10,000. Same thing with uh, Overland's Missions, right around a little over $10,000. Praise God for that. I mean, just, I mean, we don't let up. Father has promised that He is going to supply, He is going to create a miracle of great generosity from His side. And so just recognize it. Don't doubt it, because otherwise you never get to participate with the miracle of it. So I just want you to just keep giving. And you know, the bottom line of it is, if you say you've run out, I guarantee you, you haven't. You haven't, because you can't run out with them. You just cannot run out. You just keep supplying. So come worship the Lord with just offering, with giving. Hallelujah. Haradeshe Ataya. Watch the blessings come right left. You know, I got... You know, can, can you imagine driving a car and, uh, and the tires still look good after 50,000 miles? People go, what? Well, we have to get ours every 30,000. Well, I don't know, man. This, man, I don't know how far these are going to go. Because everything just goes. Everything's just blessed. 
Somebody got in the suburban the other day and said, I can just see this. It's just like the children of Israel, man. It's like 367,000 miles. And I can see it going another 100,000. I said, yeah, man, 500,000 easy. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just a blessing of the Lord. Just a blessing of the Lord. We've had many things come out against us to make it look like we didn't have the blessing of the Lord. You know what we did? We rebuked it and said it's a stinking lie. And then just watched Father take things and bless us. Just bless. Just bless and multiply. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We right now, Ann and I right now, are in this amazing miracle. In this amazing, an amazing, amazing miracle. <laughs> Where even financial institutions have to obey God and have to bless us. Hallelujah. Happened with the people who had the finances on the church over at uh, 10180. God turned their heart and they had to bless us. They had to bless us with like two and a half percent interest. <laughs> Hallelujah. And these things go on in your life. Watch what will take place. Watch what will God will do in every way, coming and going. You know, uh, the Lord has a, has a miracle. He takes it. He says, the first fish that you take up, open up its mouth, and you're going to find the whole shekel there. And it'll be enough to pay for your, your temple, it, it, it was the temple, uh, the temple of tax. Yours and mine. It's amazing how the Lord does it. Are you just in expectation of miracles? When you're in expectation of miracles, you'll participate with them. Did, can we say that again for you? This is right out of heaven. It's fresh bread. You can smell it. When you expect miracles, you'll participate with them. If you don't expect miracles, you're not going to participate with it. You're going to doubt it's going to happen. You're not ready for it. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Well, I, I still want to pray for a couple of people, but, you know, I want, uh, I want Nick here. To come. Nick, come, come here. You know, Nick, Nick's been with us, like, for a couple months, two months. And uh, he's leaving. This, could be, this is his last meeting here. And so, you know, I just wanted to be able to say goodbye to everybody and let you know what he's doing. I mean, I believe that the Lord's going to use Nick in the Middle East. I see a call of God upon his life. And, uh, you know, we just, you know, Nick, we just really, we're just jealous for you to see you not polluted by the doctrines of men. So there's this godly jealousy that we have for you. To see you get engrafted into the word because there's a lot of stuff going down that is a bunch of nonsense and 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 and, and, it's, and unfortunately it's very popular so we just believe in we just believe in the lord that he keep you by his power and by his own name and you just be dedicated to having the truth and the way the way father believes it and the way the father's saying it and you know what the god has promised by the holy ghost the legion guide you in all truth And so I'm going to pray for you because you probably knock you down. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Um, first off, I just want to say thank you. And it's been amazing three months here. I think I can speak for Joe as well. Um, the biggest blessing here, I'd say, is y'all have provoked me. Because when I see someone else in love with Jesus or really intimate with him, like I just get jealous. I'm like, Where'd they get that? Like, I want that right there. And so you guys have pushed me to a level where, like, I just want to love Jesus more and more and more. And before um, we all started here, I was praying, and God was stirring up um, some verses from Song of Solomon in me. And it says, um, I searched, and I found my beloved. And when I found him, I didn't let go. I did not let go. And it, it reminded me... I was actually with Raphael and Annalyn last night, and we were talking about how Jesus is our first love. And it reminded me of my testimony seven years ago. I was a staunch atheist, and um, one of my hobbies was just trying to break people's faith. And I had two friends on the wrestling team in high school that started sharing the gospel with me. It was the first time I ever heard Jesus preached in truth and in love, and I also saw it demonstrated in their life. And the more that they started sharing with me and the more they were sharing with me, I just 
started to fall in love with Jesus and I said, oh, I really want to know who this is. And then in the Song of Solomon, they're also saying, there's others that are saying, who is this beloved? How is he any different than any other beloved? And all those voices were in my life and it was just this, this struggle back and forth and um, my, especially my family speaking to me, not following Christ. And one morning, this little Baptist church with lots of these doctrines that Mark was just referencing, they don't believe in the Holy Spirit really connected to your life. Um, demons may be just a metaphor, not a real thing. You, there's no visions. God doesn't speak to you. You're on your own. It just didn't matter because the, my two friends, their mother prayed for me. And when she laid hands on me, I don't even know if she believed in it either. But when she laid hands on me, I got knocked out in the Holy Spirit for like three hours. And I had visions and God spoke to me. I had demons come out of my head because I had been like hosting them since I was 13. And my life was totally turned upside down. And I said, Lord, I want to follow you. Like, Jesus, I found you. I'm not letting go. Like, I want to hold on to you forever. And that's, that's where my heart has been. About a year later is the first time I heard about God's heart for the nations. Now, he desires people from every tongue and tribe and nation to come to him. And I said, Lord, you chose me. Why not them? Please send me. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, all right, I'm putting you in training. So... He's been sending me around, doing a lot of different tasks, preparing me, and I've just been obeying. One of those things um, I started learning while well, I was praying for the Arabian Peninsula since about five years ago. And I started learning Arabic two years ago. And uh, I won a scholarship. I went to Oman. It's a little country south of Saudi Arabia, and I was uh, studying Arabic intensively there. And I'm not fluent yet, but I'm at the level where I can share the gospel in Arabic um, and have got a chance to do so with some international students that have come to the United States to study, so just incredible. I'm so excited for the moment when the Middle East is open and there's an awakening, and I want to be prepared. I want to have the linguistic skills and be ready to go when that time is ready and preach. Before then, I hope to be there undercover, doing spirit stuff. When I was in Oman, one of my prayers was that I would find any Omani believer there, and uh, on the third day, there was a man who I suspected maybe the Holy Spirit was moving on him. And he came up to me and he said, hey, are you a Christian? I was like, yeah, I follow Jesus. And he's like, I want to go on a walk with you. So he's asking me questions and then he couldn't take it anymore. And he just whispered in my ear, I follow Jesus. I'm a believer. I was like, ah, that's what I prayed for. Yeah, so we got to meet secretly for weeks and study the word together and pray together. And my heart is just there. Like, I want to go back. I want to encourage him. I want to find the others. And I want to begin that movement where we see the entire nation come to Christ. I want Oman, Saudi Arabia, Yemen, United Arab Emirates. I want the peninsula. That's just where my heart is. So, yeah, thank you. <laughs> so the, the next step that God revealed to me was going to AMT going to Zambia with uh, Phil and Overland Missions. Um, it's actually how I got to Abiding Place because one of, their, one of their rules is never go alone. So when Joe got a job here for three months, he called me up and he's like, Nick, I'm going to San Diego. I don't know anybody there. Would you come with me? And I, I um, dropped everything, just came here for three months. And then when we arrived, Phil told Joe, like, I got this crazy friend named Mark. You got to go to his church. <laughs> <laughs> so we rolled in, and uh, just a small confession, we were like, we don't want to make friends because we're just going to have to leave in three months. It's going to be super hard. And usually, like, a church has a, a welcome committee with, like, five nice old ladies, and they try to get you to come back, right? They try to get you to come back, and they're the only ones that are super nice. Everyone else is rushing out to try to get lunch after the service. That was not the case here. Everybody was like, grabbing us and hugging us and filling us with love and uh i don't know if john's here he has the, the two kids he was just like hugged me and he's like i love you and, I like, what? and then <laughs> but we were like okay we got to go back we love this place you guys are on fire and we just wanted more of it um so yeah i'm gonna go uh with joe back to africa and do the three-month advanced missionary training course 
I'm in the process of fundraising. I started fundraising. I just decided two weeks ago, and the funds had to be in by yesterday. But Phil said they'd give me an extension. So I started sending out a letter last week, and actually $6,000 has already come in out That's of awesome. the 7000 that I was projecting. So just like every day, somebody was dropping 1000 and it was incredible. But just have a little bit more to go, about 1000 left. Um, and if anybody would like to give financially or give prayerfully, is there is there a slide with my name? Okay, there it is. Yeah, if anybody wants to stay updated in what I'm doing, that's and good. When the time is ready to go to the Middle East, jump on board. I don't know what the Lord is planning, but I want to go, and He's going to make it prosper. And I want, if there's anybody I want on my team, I want you guys, and I'm on your team. Like, I love Mark, I love you guys. So, whenever that time is right, I'd love to go all together. But right now, for me, it's uh, it's Zambia. If you have any words of encouragement for me, or prayers, or uh, donation, or anything, um, I'll gladly receive it. And I love you all. So, it's been good. Okay, so, we're going to pray for Nick. Who is he ready? Okay. Look hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your change and your transformation in Nick's life. Fire the Holy Ghost. Fire the, out of your belly flows these inexhaustible expressions of the Spirit of the living God. That your tongue be set on fire of the Holy Ghost. And this wonderful language of heaven begin to gush out with great diversity. Hallelujah. So that as you go everywhere, you might show this wonderful work of Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. Sick game room, Jesse. Ha ha. Latai. Lataya. Lataya monstai. Lataya. Larasapan. Separated and sanctified unto every good thing. Right now, in Jesus' mighty name. Lura sete. Lura sevrene. Jesus gura zita dala mandea. Hallelujah. Now, while I'm praying for Nicholas Amos, and that sounds like kind of a prophetic name to me, I want you to just come bless him with an offer. Just come, whatever the Lord lays on your heart, just come bless him. And he's stepping out in faith. He's taking a big step of faith. And just, just bless him. I know that many of you contact him via email, and you should just stay in t touch with him. It's good to be have people that love you and care for you encouraging you when you're out in it on a foreign field somewhere and i know that that uh phil's going to take them through the drill for three months and we're just going to see you know the lord use them in a great way in the middle east because that's where his heart is so yeah just come just you don't need to, you don't need that just just come put it down here on the ground just put it down in the ground just throw it on top of him Amen. Just shower him with blessings. Just come shower him. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for anybody who wants prayer. Anybody who wants prayer for anything. Anybody sick in your body, hurting in your heart. You need anything from heaven. I want you to come. You just want to be filled up. You just want to touch from heaven. You, whatever it is that you need, I want you to come. Hallelujah. Try not to get in the way of Nick's finances. <laughs> Try not to step all over his finances. Amen. Hallelujah. So, Kota Mama, let's step In fact, uh, Kay, come get this up for Nick and just put there. I didn't mean to literally put it on him. But... Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I just want you to, I want you guys to begin to move into a culture of touching heaven. 
I want you to move into a culture, into a way of living. Just say, I'm going to touch heaven. Pest. Pulse to find. A faith. A faith that reaches out and lays hold on that which God has given. A supernatural faith that reaches out and is able to lay hold on that which is given. <laughs> a supernatural faith that is able to take hold of the presence of the Lord at any time. Sopra, sati frikai, satru sanai. Right out of your belly. Right out of, just take a hold of these things now. Take a hold of them now. Take a hold. Take a hold. Man Zane. Take a hold. The more you spend time in the presence of the Lord, huh, the easier it, easier it is to receive that which he has supplied. <laughs> the more you give yourself to the presence of the Lord, the stronger the impact comes. Yeah. Yeah. Si saraya eshaya. Si arasaya robo don sa. It is say to us. It is say to us tonight and a. It is say to us tonight and a. Lord asai and me gave us here to. Zera mama na na ne eshaya te. Zera mama na na ya la mange. This I want to encourage all of you to come into a culture where you don't sit like a bump on the log. Because that ain't going to do nothing for you. Don't just sit there. Now don't get me upset. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Jezeke arayasa, Zekaya mandaya se, mangaya se abayate, gaya masa abayate, jasaya abayate yate, jasaya abayata yare, jasaya abayara sai, ayala maya, ala maya ya, ala mangaya se ya, iya de se ya patoya, ha, jezi ala baki arabasa ya nene ya, ha. Mango yo soro mo se ne ne si Mange a si taya braba bo sareya Mange le se ro Ire ma mande yo so Ma ya ya Se robo se rebo Se rebo Se rebo Se rebo Set a bow! Set a bow! Bay a tie! Say it up, Max Zays. Zayda Nanda Seru. That's right. Touch heaven. Ain't nothing going to change in your life till you touch heaven. So if you want to see if you want to see things change on a consistent basis, you have to learn how to touch heaven on a consistent basis. Kishurama mamandis. Ha. Listen, remember, you can serve yourself or you can serve God. When yourself is bigger than reaching out to God, you're serving yourself. Don't do that. Don't bow down to yourself and adore yourself. That's the people get shut in with themselves, and they don't want to. They don't want to go and release their lives into Him and just say, "Father, I want You. I want to be touched by You. I want to be filled with You. I want to be overshadowed by You." Go to heaven. There's time for hugging each other later. Go to heaven. See me standing around hugging a hand. Sikara Masaya. Sikara Masaya. Sikara Masaya. 
एक सी आठ जा I can tell the people that need the most touch of God and the most change in their life, and they're having the most problems. They got the biggest frowns on their face right now. And that's that's not that says. And that in the Word of God says you should be frowning in the presence of the Lord. When you're really being touched by heaven, you look like you you look like somebody died. Just the opposite, rather. Fires. Fire! Outpouring the Spirit of the Living God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Ah. I guarantee you, there's not a person in here, the smallest child that's in this place, has been given authority to run off the biggest devil. It is a sad thing to watch God's people be overrun by the powers of darkness. It is a sad thing. I'm telling you right now, people concerned about their children. Listen, you got to be concerned about yourself first. Because if you don't have a move of God in your life, how can you expect your children to have one in theirs? Give me a break. That's nuts. Stoko Rimas today. That's like feeding your children pork chops and wondering why they're not eating steak. Or something like that. Hallelujah. She got a today. Maybe I should say feeding them salad and wondering why they're not eating steak. No, it's worse than that. It's worse than that. Jesus. Out of your belly, out of the innermost being, the Spirit flows this river of God. Rebasarade. Lirebasarade. Libra basara day. Libra basara day. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's you. Hallelujah. That's you all hooked up with the Holy Ghost there. Hallelujah. Bro sana nay. Bro sana may. Yeah, get it, get it. Yeah, in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. Yes! 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I command you to be made whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Nothing can touch your body. Every foul thing of the ill, I bust you now in Jesus' name. Fire of God. Surapaya to stay. Malasaya. Now Malasaya. Right now in Jesus' name. Out of your belly flows. Out of your belly flows. Out of your belly flows. Rivers of the Holy Ghost. Zikaraba <laughs> basedi Now in Jesus' name. No more holding back. 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 No more holding on to yourself. In Jesus' name. No more holding on to yourself. Complete surrender in every dimension of your life. Right now in the name of the living God.
Suturisita, tu suturisita. Oh, si carare, oh, si kiaraba seribi. Out of your belly, out of your belly, out of your belly flows. These rivers are the Holy Ghost. Masalaye, amane. Masayale, amane. In Jesus' name, in the name of the Most High God, Mandangris, the four authority, power and authority, Lodo Sata, power and authority. You know, some folks wrote a song said, Touching heaven, changing earth, and that's true. You touch heaven, you change earth. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's a demand that you place more than anything else. It's a man, demand you place on yourself. I'll tell you right now, I got married and didn't shut down one bit of hunger from direction and focus that I had on God. I watch people get married and just basically they get all distracted. That's nonsense. Bunch of nonsense. You get after God now. You get after the things of the Spirit now. Hallelujah. You get after the things of the Spirit now. Hallelujah. We tell you in Jesus' name, get after the things of the Spirit. Quit diddle dallying around on God. Amen. Get after that. God's giving you authority to do something. Hallelujah. Gave you a lot more authority than just to sit around and think about it. He gave you, he's filled you with his word. Zoro Zedaradea, he's filled you with his spirit. Hallelujah. Todandea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you just grab a hold of God. Just grab a hold of God. Just grab a hold of God. In the Masate, grab a hold of the name of Jesus. Grab a hold of the authority of God. Yeah. Grab a hold of the authority of heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Some of you are just as, as you're just as passive as you were before the meeting began. Just as passive. And nothing aggressive or aggro about you. Passive. You better get with the program. Yes, she passed. That's it. You get after it. Get after it now. Get after it in the things of the Spirit. The Lord does not just speak out into the air. He warns us of things to come. He equips us to be able to stand in the evil day. It is not some option. Father doesn't just give options. It's, it's the essential alarm of heaven going off. People just act like they, they can just do whatever they want to do. Get aggro. Get aggressive. Get violent. Lay hold on the things of the Spirit. Sapron Sanai. Sapron. The fire, Holy Ghost. The fire. The fire. Musitea Rai. The fire. Suturi Mest. Ambandaya Shea. A Fatoyo. A Fasadeo. A Satea Shapai. Yeshana. Yeshana. Oh. Irra baba, irra baba, irra baba. No sere de kere de sere man. In Jesus' name, 
Urababana Jeka Urababa Satana Isidilu Get aggressive Don't be passive <laughs> Lift up your voice Cry out to God The day is short the time is short there's no more time to play around it's an evil day that must be met with authority with a passion with the uh, uh, ability that only the Holy Ghost gives In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, every yoke of every yoke of stubbornness broken. Huh. Everything that belongs to hurt and offense busted. Let the rivers of divine glory, let the rivers of divine glory break forth. Break forth! Break forth! The Kuros are in name Robos, the Anana Manayas. He remember There is a rebel in a carriage, says a Rodos. Hallelujah! 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 What's up? broke my finger and been throbbing all day swollen purple and right now I just got the little scar where I got hit that's it I could close my fist that's beautiful what a glorious God America working God <laughs> hallelujah a healing God let him touch you listen if, you're, if your spirit's not busting loose with the glory of heaven right now, it's because something's stuffed up the well. Something's clogging you up. Something's on you that don't belong on you. I guarantee you if I pointed and said there's a big old giant spider in your hair, you'd get active. You'd get active. He'd get active. <laughs> Hallelujah. You watch out now. You watch out now. You listen to me, people. You just be careful what you agree with. You be careful what you agree with. You agree with the things of heaven, and that's it. And you stop modeling yourself after men. And you stop agreeing with things that are less than that glory that God gave to his church. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is running through a troop. And you listen to me. And if you don't recognize that which you're up against... You, you won't understand why you're going through the things or having to deal with the things that you're dealing with. But when you recognize you're up against a troop that would oppose you, we up against things that are most, as it were, fortified defenses against us. Do not sit around. Do not just lackadaisically leave it for somebody else and for another day. It's Satan's trap. 
that which you leave for another day is forever lost. There, this time, right now, will never be here again. It will end when we leave this building tonight. This particular opportunity, this particular position before God, the trying of your heart, the response of your willingness, these things will never happen again. There'll be opportunity maybe to come back around to this place. I'm going to tell you right now, as for me, I'll always respond to him. I'll never withhold myself from him. Satan lies with his excuses. He lies with his threats. And too many people listen to them. Listen to me. If you carry an offense in your heart, if you carry an attitude, any kind of attitude of unforgiveness, it is a playground for the enemy of your soul to again begin to work in your life. And he will come, and he, as a thief, in circumstances, situations, and problems, will come as a thief to kill you, steal from you. What? Steal what? The anointing. Steal what you had in the, in the promises of God and the blessings of God. Kill what? Kill the anointing. Huh? Kill what? Kill the uh, possibilities and the opportunities that you had. Destroy what? Destroy the anointing. Destroy the vision. Destroy the purpose. And leaving you in a life that is merely human. Careful what you choose. I pray in the name of Jesus that every person in this place would choose the Father every time. Say, well, he was too rough with me. Not half as much as you needed. And besides that, why is anything going to be able to keep you out of that which God has called you to do? I'm going to tell you what I'm rough with. I'm rough with the, that disposition that I can see Satan will come and take advantage of you with. I'm going to be rough with the wolf. I'm going to be rough with the bear. I'm going to be rough with the lion. In fact, I'm going to just kill it. And what you need to do is you need to come under authority. And when the man of God tells you to get passionate, you need to get passionate. And if you don't, you're just stinking rebellious. And that's it. You can say it's you can say it's temporary rebellion. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, temporary rebellion just basically turns into permanent rebellion. Because when you begin to agree with God and you step out and you do what God says to do, you'll find a miracle. Even if you're even if you're naming. And you're the captain of the host. The man of God just says, Go dip seven times. It's about time to start touching heaven. You just need to mark this down, dear people. Mark it down in your little book. I will not stand by and watch Satan run over top of people. I will not. I will not be some passive facilitator while the enemy runs ruin. On what Bob planned to do, I'm gonna get and I'm gonna get aggressive. I'm gonna get intense, and I pray you get aggressive and you get intense too. You quit letting Satan steal from you and rip you off. To me, there's nothing more wonderful than the anointing. It defines life, and I don't have an anointing once a week. Or once a month. I don't decide to live once and ever, once and ever, ever so often. Are you listening to me? <laughs> I want to live every moment. I want to live every moment. Praise the name of Jesus. Say, Jesus, 
you my master. Holy Ghost, you rule me. I don't let my attitudes rule me. I don't let other people's attitudes rule me. You rule me. You move me. Move me. Hallelujah. There's people say, well, must there be a great display of emotion touching heaven? Yeah. Must there be a, a, a great display of emotion climbing a mountain? Yeah. Swimming a river? Yeah. Running? Yes. A marathon? Yes. Raised in the dead? Yeah. Must there be a great display of emotion at Calvary's cross? Yes. In the resurrection? Yeah. Around the throne of God. Can't you just see a bunch of people with crossed legs just sitting there going, hmm. Uh, you can just see the seraphim just sitting there all meditatively, can't you? You know, see that in heaven. You do not see in heaven what most of God's people do here on earth. And I'm just challenging everybody to break out the stinking mold. Come follow over here in this realm of glory. Come follow over here in this realm of heaven. Quit letting the earth and quit letting the world steal all of your joy and all of your expressions of happiness and all of your expressions of excitement so there's none left over for God. You spin them all surfing. You spin them all playing. You spin them all with the praises of men, excitement about the fact that you got a dollar bill. No, sir, we're not going to have that. Father, raise me up to throw down idols, to point them out and throw them down. Hallelujah. Cost a day a pile. See a bunch of people be raised up to do the same. Ha <laughs> ha. Malaseatea. That's what you're going to do. You, did you know that? That's what you're going to do. You're going to live your life touching heaven and changing the earth. That's what you're going to do. We are not going to be sad, sick, and, and sorry. We're going to be happy, healthy, hallelujah, and blessed. <laughs> hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for divine health and divine healing. How's Mama doing over here? Amen. Amen. How's that back now? Huh? It's gone. I come in and go. Now check it. I'm speaking strongly to it. I will not allow it. Is it gone? No, there's a place. See, there's people try to have this. They don't have it because they don't know God. And then they just run interference with those who do. I got it. And so therefore I can execute the authority of it. Amen.
It has to obey me, you see. I speak to sickness and disease as though it was something personified. It's a person. Huh? It's like something, it's like something grabbing a hold. So imagine this. You know, some stranger grabbing a hold of my wife and got her in a headlock. What do you think I'm going to do? Stand there. Oh, would you please let her go? Uh, oh, uh, excuse me, sir. Please, don't hurt my wife, please. Uh, what are you doing? No, I asked you, please, not to do that. Well, I guess you won't be doing it for long, so I'll, I'll just leave you alone for now. It ain't, it ain't gonna, that ain't gonna happen, is it? That ain't gonna happen, is it? That ain't gonna happen, is it? That's what I'm saying. I personify it. For me, it's personified. It's a person. It's a thing. And I have authority over it. And so I, when you can see it that way, you will not let up until it's busted. Until it's broken. The only people that I can't do that to is when I look at someone and they shut their will off to me. People can shut their will off to, uh, to a man of God. They can shut their will off. We can shut our will off to God. Do it by offense or do it because we feel like we're being picked on or whatever. Shut your will off. Then you just can't do nothing. God can't do nothing. You can't do nothing. But when the will is open, uh-oh. We're going to get in there and get it done. <laughs> Are we gonna, isn't that what we're going to do, baby? Amen. We're not going to have sickness and disease in this place. We're not going to have it. You're not going to allow it. We, it's, we have no tolerance. We're intolerant against it. Amen. If Satan is lying to you and tor tormenting you about dying, you bust that thing. You smack it. You smack it with the authority of prayer. With the authority of of the Holy Spirit. It's all prayer and supplication by the Holy Ghost. I pray tonight in Jesus' name that you can personify the enemy of your soul. You can personify sickness. You can personify disease. You can personify every evil thing, doubt, unbelief, and you get after it until that thing is broken. You look at it like an offender, a stranger coming in and, 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 and putting that or putting... Really, no, I'm really it's literally putting someone in a headlock because that's what it's affixed, it's attached. Machete, it's just done, it's over. But if it's just on a person, just on them, and you have the authority to break it off, recognize what you would do in that, in that situation. You're not going to let up until the thing is done. You're not, everything's going to be swinging. Yeah, <laughs> everything is going to be moving. You had to sit there. Please let him go. It's not, it's just not, it's not real. That's not a real expression. That is not a real expression. Thus, it's religious. It's not a real expression of dealing with an enemy. Dealing with something that's there to destroy you as a thief on one side. The other side, in respect of dealing with God. You're not going to sit there that way either. It's religious. You want to touch heaven. He's real. He's a present God. And you're not going to sit there interacting like with, you do with anybody else. You're not going to do it. Show me in the Word of God where anybody interacts with Father like that. Give me a break. It's time we demand reality. Get into a place where your soul demands reality. Get into a place where you don't let up to the real things flowing. You know, just take whatever comes at you. Quit being passive. You hear the word of the Lord. Father sends forth his word to really establish us and strengthen us to help us to be able to deal with the evil day, the things that are coming, getting ready to come at us. I've never preached a sermon and did not see, as I did not 
I've never reached a sermon and not see Father equip me and others who would listen for things that happen in the very near future, right after it. You believe me. You can't just... And then if you just take it like, you know, it's just words spoken out in the air, it's another sermon, another idea, or just like, and it's all religious, and you normalize it like, well, I think some people normalize it and make it less than normal. They pay more attention to teachers that are going to talk, talk to them about success and finances or whatever. But you need to take the Word of God as it's being spoken for what it's worth. Your life. Your protection. Your blessing. Your empowerment. God, the Holy Ghost, comes to show us things that are going to happen in the future. Many times what He does to show us things that are going to happen in the future, rather than to describe the details of that, He gives us the prevention. He gives us the ability to stand against it, the equipment. He gives us the positive side of it. This is what I'm going to do for you. You do it with me. And then doesn't have to go through all the details of the disaster and catastrophe and things that would come up against us. So hear what the Lord says. Do what God says to do. And find yourself going from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Find yourself being prepared unto every good work. Ain't no sense in you going anywhere and you don't have ability to cast out devils and touch heaven. And now you get the opportunity to learn by participating at this moment in time. And we purpose to see everybody in this place go everywhere. Do what you said, going everywhere, casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Full of faith. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we just thank you. You take the finances here. And you multiply them. And you teach Nick how to live in a realm of faith. Hallelujah. And honor. Glory and honor. Glory and honor. Glory and honor. That's what we get when we're with Him. We walk with Him. We submit to Him. We obey Him. We get glory and honor. We get glory and honor and eternal life. That's what happens when we seek it. When we seek it from Him, eh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We walk with him in obedience. It's what's, it's a what, it's what, that's what's ours. Why wouldn't anybody want anything else? You ain't going to get anything else following me, I'm telling you right now. I'm going to follow Jesus. I'm going to have that. Hallelujah. Sukuri basadeya. See, reality of it is, is if you step into this place that we're in right now, if you go in deeper, all the gifts of the Spirit are here right now. You just can't tap them because you're in another realm. It's not heaven. It's human. And, and, and we, we patiently tell people this over and again. But if you'll touch heaven, if you'll get, if you'll quit participating with so much worldly stuff and earthly sensual stuff, it'll be easier if we go right around the realm and the gifts of the Spirit just slow right here. Whatever's needed. And I say prophecy is always needed. I say tongues and interpretation is always needed. Hallelujah. Pearl Kosea. I am petitioning you to begin to make a culture in church and out of church of touching heaven. Of touching that realm to where the glory of God grabs a hold of you, seizes you, and ain't no put on. It's a, it's a flowing out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because most of you know what it means to be apprehended by the divine power of God. And you're now off, you know, in glory land. So just don't be without it. I'm going to say it one more time and we're going to close. Stop being passive. Stop just letting it whatever come. Come. Get aggressive. You do this, you'll find the place of living in God that is that's the life of 
of glory, more importantly, or just as important as the life of the overcomer, because it's if you don't have the if you're not living the life of an overcomer, you're not going to live in the glory that Father has for you. Don't be sick, huh? Amen. And that's empowerment when we receive it. Don't be. Cast the key in the mouth of the apaha. Don't be tormented. Don't be harassed. Amen. Come under the rule. Come under the rule of the Holy Ghost. There's a big transition when you come under the rule of the Holy Ghost. No longer you're you, no longer you really you're, you know, you in charge, in that sense. Huh? Holy, when the Holy Ghost blows, you immediately gone where the wind's taking you. Amen. Those of you who don't have any cells, see me after the meeting. Because it's hard. It's, it's tough to float around on the sea of the Lord with a boat without a sail and a boat without a sail. Drifting. I'll get you some sails. Amen. I haven't done everything that I could do and I haven't done it tonight. Most of the nights I don't, I don't go and, and allow to even give Half of what Father's anointed me to give. Because we're gonna, I gotta wrestle with the thing till the end of the, till midnight. And you guys are gonna have to deal with that. I have to wrestle with the thing until midnight, and it's just already time to go home. So I have to go somewhere else to give what God's already given me. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You need to press in. You need to lay hold on eternal life. You need to, you need to be active. So we can go ahead and, 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 and uh, minister all that Papa has allowed us and afforded us to minister in this house. Huh? Go visit somewhere so I can go ahead and flow in the anointing in a greater dimension. It's nonsense. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm, gonna get, I'm, gonna get, I'm going to be aggressive for a while. So just duck. <laughs> if that's what you need to do or just stand up and get in the full brunt of the wind. <laughs> Amen. And get the full benefit of it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, people make choices. You know, I mean, I, I deal with this. I talk to Papa this about all the time. I'm just like, Lord, why do so many people walk away from a gift, an anointing, a privilege, a divine opportunity? Because it is so stubborn, so hard-headed. They want to do it whatever they want. They don't care about what you want. They don't care about your warnings. They don't care about nothing except for what they purpose to do. Why is that? Why is that? It's training yourself. You've trained yourself to live in a realm of your own need and put that above everything else. And you have, the only way that's ever going to be broken is you're going to say, I'm not, living, I'm not living under the realms of my own need anymore. I'm not going to do it. I'm live for the need of the Father. And so when the word of the Lord comes to me, I don't care if it comes from a donkey, a man of God, I hear it audibly. I'm going to obey. I'm not going to wrestle with it. People wrestle to their own destruction. The word of God, how much more the word of prophecy? I'm going to have it my way. Meeting your, you know, and fist on the table, I'm going to have it my way. Don't do that. You don't get anywhere with God. Sit around, criticize everything, try to evaluate everything. like one man of God said, everybody's praying for the move of God till it comes, then they have a committee. <laughs> because when a revival comes, when a move of God comes, nobody agrees with it. Refuse you agree with it. So they got to form a committee, committee to, you know, exp you know, to figure out all the problems and what they're going to do with all the problems. Nothing in heaven looks like anything on earth. Most people will agree with nothing that God is doing. It's so different from the realms of men. It's so different from that which belongs to the realms of men. And obviously completely opposite from that which is influenced 
influencing the realms of men, the powers of darkness. And I, there's maybe just a slight shade between the two. Why don't you study the Word of God and see what's going on in heaven and start participating with it? Quit pretending. I don't care what you were last week. What are you today? I don't care how much anointing you had last month. What you got right now? I don't care what you did 10 years ago. What are you doing right now? I don't care what you did. Who do you know? We can see who you know by the, watching the interaction between you and him in a place like this. Everything's revealed. There's nothing hidden. It's about time people get buried. It's taking you to rend your heart before God and say, I'm tired of pretending, acting like I got more than I have. That's the desperation. That's the need for heaven that brings change. People sit around all built up in their, some falsehood, nonsense, falsehoods. What we have in Christ Jesus is revealed in our interaction with him, not in anything else. Okay? Okay, well, I, okay so here's what I gave you. Here's the word of the Lord that I gave you on Wednesday night, on Sunday night. I said, leave here. Go stand in his presence till Wednesday night. Then come back up here and stand in the presence that you stood in on Monday night and Tuesday night. Come stand here. And I could see some have obeyed and some have not. Some took it to heart and some did not. So the Word of God is whimsical. It's, if it's, it's your convenience, if you feel it's appropriate for your particular things that you've decided to do, fine, bits. Otherwise, God, take a hike. Quit doing it. Come under the rule. Come under the rule. Because what we're talking about is we're talking about the will and the heart of the Father. And I am, you're not going to find me being passive, passive about it. I'm not going to be a facilitator. I know when the word of the Lord comes. It's been proven plenty of times in my life. And when, you, when, you, when I see the word of the Lord come through your mouth and proven in your life again and again, then I'm going to listen a little bit more to you, potentially, if I have a doubt. And we love a witness anyways. But I know the word of the Lord. I know when the Spirit of the Lord is saying to do something, it's best to do it. Otherwise, you basically miss out and then you sit there and you, you know, give more opportunity for the enemy to beat you down and leave you out. Hear God, lay hold on eternal life. Lay hold on it, don't let it go. Amen. There is no bad thing or evil thing that Satan would do or the circumstances could, would create that you have to accommodate. None of it. You allow it because you will. You subjugate yourself to it. Don't do that. Don't do it. Decide, there's, there's an end to sickness, an end to pain, an end to torment, an end to stubbornness, an end to rebellion. An end to unwillingness to obey. An end, just God gives word after word after word, and then people just ignoring it, and then praying, crying out, "Oh God, give me a word!" It's like, what? You give me? You know, I can hear Father. It's like, what are you talking about? I'm giving you word after word after word, and you not listen to it. Obey when Papa speaks. Just do what He tells you to do. And Father speaks in his church collectively, and that's where you're going to find the, prim the primacy of that. Then the overflow out of being connected with that and obeying that, then Father begins to speak to you, even in a greater dimension. Of course, he speaks to all of us through his words, so you understand that. Everybody understands that. I'm talking about personal direction, prophetic direction, word of knowledge direction, word of wisdom direction. Revelation, direction, God, the Holy Spirit speaking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now you stay right where you were tonight. Because I look, I watched you, I watched a breakthrough happen in your life tonight. Stay there. Because it's so easy. It's just so easy. <laughs> just don't go back. Don't, don't let nothing oppress you. Don't let, listen, I'm talking to all of you. Don't let stuff affix itself to you. Attitudes, disposition, realms of thinking that are not the ways of God. You're never going to walk in the mind of Christ, walking in your own mind, walking in the mind influenced by the realms of this 
present evil world. Know what you're thinking about. Make sure it belongs to heaven. If it doesn't, shut it down. Shut it down. Whatever it takes, shut it down. And then you get to rise up and begin to make a difference. Watch out for the bare aspirin bottle. You know, I just saw a bare aspirin bottle. Watch out for it. And it's just a symbol. Because if you spend too much time retreating to AIDS to deal with pain and problems, it's no cure. That's no cure. And it becomes a replacement for you being developed and built up in the faith and relying upon God. Watch out for the beer aspirin bottle. Huh? Why don't you just go ahead and bust through the thing? Why don't you just go ahead and get strong in the Lord? Why don't you just go ahead and believe God that everything He says in His Word is yours and just bank everything on it? Come on now, in Jesus' name. I'm going to see you to see you. Father, we want everything about our lives in this place to be an offering that is holy and acceptable unto you. And we know, Father, exactly what you do. As soon as there's an offering that's holy and acceptable to you, you send your fire on it. And it is consumed. Ha! Ha! And we, Papa, we, Father, we want to be consumed with your will, consumed with your presence, consumed with your mandate, consumed with your compassion, consumed with your purpose, consumed. Ha! O Rabba Siteris. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Makaino supaina basihira. I want to this last thing I'm gonna say, I think. But I want to encourage every one of you to do this. Come in here with an expectation to see a greater move of God. And in that expectation, there is a participation because otherwise the expectation is false. An expectation that, is, that we're talking about of hunger and passion to see the things of the Spirit of the Lord revealed, you're going to be engaged. And that's where it goes to another place. I want you to give attendance to the Spirit of the Lord and begin to participate with a culture of touching the realms of glory. Go home. Stand in His presence. He's waiting for you. Just stand in His presence. Maybe you only have 30 minutes. I pray you would have more time, but whatever. Stand in His presence with an aggressiveness about touching him, an aggressiveness, not a, a doubt and unbelief, but an aggressiveness. Father, I want you. God, I want you more than anything. Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you that it's available. I do not want to live one second without it. Let your glory fall upon me, oh God. Let your anointing overwhelm me. Let every part of your will and purpose now be realized by me. I give myself unreservedly to you. I tell you, talk to Father like this. You get after it. Because these are the passions of the heart. Not the thoughts of the head. They're the passions of the heart. He will answer you. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we love every one of you. And we praise God for the miracles and the things that happen in your life tonight. For the broken finger now healed. For the deliverance, for the torment gone, for the back pain gone, huh? For the affliction of the skin gone. Geneva, in the name of Jesus Christ, you shall live a very long life. You will not have any diseases. 
No afflictions will come upon your body. Amen.